dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end time last time on missed opportunities, the party descended down into the den of the lizard folk, whom they heard had been arming themselves with weapons stolen from Neverwinter. The uh, council and the leaders of Salt Marsh were worried about this growing threat and asked the party to investigate. And as they decided to simply knock on the front door, they were pulled in and quickly surrounded by dozens and dozens of lizard folk. They did not um, react in any hostile manner, thankfully. No blood was shed, and they were quickly taken before Queen Othokent, who sent them on a mission to earn her trust and the respect of her people. They were told to go kill the massive crocodile the monstrosity known as thousand teeth a little trek through the swamp a battle with a troll in the middle they found ended up finding thousand teeth um, floating about hunting in a pool of uh, stagnant swamp water they slew this massive crocodile cut it in half and started um uh, trucking it back to the lizard folk lair. Now, my friends, you do make it all the way back to the entrance. Your approach is noticed as around the sort of bog area um, upon which the skull-like entrance to the lizard folk lair is situated, um, you see a patrol or um, maybe a half a dozen lizard folk guards with spears kind of hanging about the entrance, um, looking towards you. And as you approach, I assume I, I, I heard on with the, um, what you may call it, the uh, skull on a tensor's floating disc, yes? Is that what how I understand that you are? And the, the body on a tensor's floating disc? Yeah. Body Correct. on a disc. And body on a disc. Who has the head? Who's strong? I'm strong. Me strong. Me have head. <laughs> the Triton has it. <laughs> Very good. All right. And uh, with both body and head, you see... <laughs> <laughs> the lizard folk kind of begin to jump up, some of them doing a little dance, um, raising their spears up in the air. Quickly, uh, half a dozen more or a dozen more start pouring out of the mouth of this cave. And, um, you see, and you are welcomed back into the lair. Nether does get down off of the crocodile that has been floating on the disc. Please tell me you were, like, riding the body, like, sitting atop of the body like it was alive and still moving. Of like... course I was. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> she was unfortunately facing the wrong way for most of the trip, but oh, okay. other than that, <laughs> took a little bit away of the, uh, the, but she enjoyed herself. Okay. Sarayan lumbers in with this head, <laughs> with her, I don't know exactly how she's holding it, Hope maybe on her shoulder, and <laughs> she just... 
puts it she starts talking with it <laughs> she puts it down um so there is a flurry of excitement going on with all these lizard folk here as no um a couple of them that look like commoners unarmed um unarmored sort of start to drag the body of the crocodile away um though the uh the head is left sitting there and you see the old sort of um hunched over glassy-eyed uh figure of Saurive walking towards all of you hmm you have succeeded you are champions yes yes seems like it mm. good good we will feast tonight there is time time needed to prepare time that you must use as well this will earn you respect but trust, trust hard earned, will take more than one show of penance and respect to Othokent. You must show us, mm, show people your worth and your dedication to our well being. Yes. How do we Sounds do that? Fine to me. Didn't we already um, do, do that? Well, it sounds like we sort of need to compound our action and intent. We've opened I... the door. We haven't exactly stepped in and been welcomed with open arms yet. Well, you haven't. I made a friend. <laughs> Tamp down my irritation at that comment. You are... You are free to come and go from our home. You were not restricted in your movements. However, you have not earned the love of the people, only their tolerance. Yes. Makes I sense. Oh, I'm happy to do that. I'm very familiar with that particular sentiment. DM, um, in the time that Nether was writing this creature, uh, would it have been possible to determine if it was a naturally occurring gigantic creature or if there was something more to it? Um, sure, you may make a nature check with that. While Sean is doing that, a massive thank you to Pixie Wink Wonk. <laughs> Why have you changed your name, Pixie? Uh, <laughs> Peter, talk NPC to me. What? Oh, Peter. really? So NPC Ooh. to me, twenty dollars. Thank you very much, Pixie. We nice. Oh, I'm excited. Yay, Pixie. That's awesome. We will. He's uh, played some great characters in my games. Um, I have rolled a natural one on that nature check, by the way, for a grand total of five. Um, <laughs> it's big, but it looks like a crocodile. It's, yeah. Got it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he will then summon a soldier. He will summon a Vardagach as well, who will then escort, the, take the head and bring it to the chambers of Queen Otha Kent. Um, you will all, if you wish you can go there as well um, where you will see them mounting it along the side of all of the other trophies in that particular room um, it goes alongside let's see here um, now along with the crocodile in this room on the west wall there is a giant crayfish head a what looks to be a um, well, a carrion crawler head, the head of a hippopotamus, of a hobgoblin, and then something some of you might recognize. Um, uh, Mariah and um, Prion 
And I guess Nether wouldn't necessarily recognize it. You would know this, you would think of this as a sea devil, um, a type of creature that uh, is sort of like a corrupted type of sea elf that will oftentimes attack ships. Bloodthirsty, utterly evil, and incredibly dangerous. Um, Serayan, um and any who wish to make um, deeper history checks, but Serayan would know this as a Sahuagin. And the ancient enemy of the Tritons, um, the opposite to your just and good reign under the waters, they are. So. Sarayan approaches the Sahuagin head, and you can tell that she's clearly affected by it. She's looking at it very seriously, kind of studying it, making notes in her journal. Um, DM, if, uh, if we are not otherwise occupied, I'd like to find a comfy corner and tune my violin. Okay. Um, you are, you are brought into the throne room at the moment where, um, you, the, the, the head is mounted. Right. And, yeah, there is, um, some time for, um some rest and uh, reflection between all of you. Um, the queen is sitting upon her um, throne looking just rather pensively, uh, looking very pleased at the new addition to the heads. Sorry, I actually only read half of the heads that are on there too. There is also a brown bear, a shark, a giant frog, and another shark on the other wall. All right. So they're proud of the shark kills. Uh, and then, yeah, so that is... Um, you are given some time. There is a lot of activity going on outside of the throne room at the moment. Um, you think, you, you know that it was mentioned before that a feast would be prepared from the bottom and so from the body of the crocodile. So this is now taking place the uh, frantic and excited preparations for a banquet. Based on the way we've seen the lizard folk eat, what are the chances they're actually planning to cook this? Um, before you've heard, um, you've heard the, sorry, um, you've, well, when you were in the layer before, you heard, wow, I keep, this is the problem, I kept, keep saying heard, you have smelt the smell of cooking meat. Unsure. Depending on how close we were, we could also possibly have heard the smell. Heard the crackling, yes, sure. coming from the commissary and whatnot. Potentially, yes. Wow. So... I spoke Edward. I, I ask the hard questions. <laughs> you do. I could only think of one verb. Heard. You have heard. Can I walk over that? You can hear... Uh, <laughs> what can I see over there? You can hear... <laughs> Man. Hearing is the most important sense, question mark? Uh, so, oh. speaking of hearing, <laughs> Sarayan would like to approach the throne of the queen and inquire after the head of the Sahuagin and ask how she got it. It was a recent invasion. We thwarted it, barely. We are still weakened from their attack and from the attack of your kind that happened before it. The attack of my kind? Yes, smooth skins. I'm not a smooth skin though, I'm a triton. Mm. Do you see no difference between me and I don't know. Points to Mariah. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you act like the rest. And your people have treated lizard folk like the rest. So, you are smooth skin like the rest. Not of us. Okay, I think Though your I courtesy understand. is appreciated, Triton. Your Majesty, 
sorry. Um, to jump in here, I'll stand up real quick from my corner. Um, recent smooth skin invasion? Two weeks ago. Ones like oh. you and two half ogres, I am told. And uh, she looks to Saurif, who nods to her, um, confirming that that's what they were. Yes, half ogres, I am told. Interesting. Um, that, I honestly have to say, is news to us. Um, and I'm a little disturbed by that. Um, can you tell me a little more? Does maybe Salreve or one of your other advisors could maybe give us a few more details on that so maybe we could track down, like, what the fuck is going on here? We killed them all. And those who were not appetizing now rot in the garbage. Do you have any of their accoutrement? We Here, had no items. use. So... Their ruined armor, their things, again, rotting with their corpses. Rotting where? We can show you. That'd be great. Have we seen any ogres in Salt Marsh? Uh, no. You have not. Um, ogre kind and half ogre kind, not common at all. So that's an odd, um, an odd statement to hear from the queen. She will bring you over to an area, or um, she will not, um, but should you wish to leave at this moment and look, they can es excuse me, escort you to where they say the bodies remain. Uh, does that, anyone want to come with me? I definitely could use an extra couple sets of eyes on this in case right. there is something. Sure. I'll come. Uh, I, I suppose I, I could come. Nether her stay in the crown room. Crown room? Crown room. Crown room? Melvin, crown room. Melvin, maybe we can both take notes over separate bodies and compare them later? Uh, sure, yeah, that, that'd be fine. Um, I'll want to hear a little bit more about the so, so, who again? I, yeah. I've never heard of those before. I'd, I'd love to learn more. I have a lot to tell you. Oh, okay. Freon would look to the group going and say, uh, I think I may just stay here. Unless you need me, of course. You're fine. Hmm. So, um... To the trash! You... <laughs> Nether does stay, in the, does stay in the crown room, but she finds a very out-of-the-way corner and sits down and is very quiet as her senses accompany the rest of the group to the trash. All right. You are led past um, an open door, which appears to be a large sort of dining hall or um, banquet room for the lizard folk into a room with a number of um, practice dummies with uh, spears, swords, maces, all types of weapons um, set on the wall around the corner and out down a passageway. As you start to descend the stairs down to um, another area, a couple things stand out to you. First is beyond this hallway um, down and um, about 20 or 30 feet ahead of you, you see that this, this passageway leads down and opens into sort of a murky pool. Um, it seems to just simply descend down into water. It's still a cave, so there's still rock above. And then down there, there seems to be the figure of perhaps an elf. Um, Blue-skinned, looks like a sea elf, just sort of um, leaning against the wall in this area. He turns to your, your direction, his arms crossed across his chest, and raises an eyebrow, and then turns his back and walks further um, down into the pool area and around a corner where you can no longer see him. And this is happening in this area. Here is a picture oops, um, of the elf that you see. Ara, ara. Hmm? Nothing. He's cute. Oh, that's exactly what I said. 
And as you, that is what you see when you turn this corner up here. As you move further up to the north, um, there are a number of closed doors. And while you were distracted for a moment by truly a good looking um, sea elf, you are soon distracted by something on the opposite side of the uh, uh, scale of sensory pleasure. And reeking sort of awful, foul, sour smell wafts from this hallway. Uh, and the, a lizard folk who has been sent to help leads you around the corners and opens a door here, revealing an enormous pile of refuse, reeking of decay. Scattered on the floor are broken and rusted weapons, um, rotted leather straps, pile of moldy sacks, dirty and torn clothes of various colors, and pieces of wood that may have at one point been furniture. I guess we investigate, right? Yes, I would like to see their armor and think Mariah went mute. Yeah. I was just, no I realized I was muted there for a moment. Um, I would be happy to in in, uh, assist with the investigation efforts, um, and I will do so at part from a distance using Mage Hand. Um, but uh, I sort of turn to Melvin. All right, kiddo. Uh -huh. Time to show your uh, brain chops there. Uh, help me find um, some stuff. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, and I'll pull my book out and summon the quill and hand it off to my mage hand. Um, so the mage hand will be writing for me to leave me a, a free hand to dig, dig through this pile of stuff. Um, and I'll and I'll start searching through it. I guess I offer you advantage. <laughs> Great. All right. Rayan you... is disgusted and just stands back. She's too royal to go in there. She's oh, decided. I mean... <laughs> DM. Mm -hmm. um, given that I am currently watching over all of everyone here, um, I'm going to take a good look at this as well. Uh, what is the danger of disease or sickness? So it sounds like everyone came along to this. You didn't, no, you know, I'm I, I'm, I'm staying in the crown in the crown room, but um, I'm using uh, Eyes of the Beast Master to. Um, oh, you're coming along to, still. Uh, through that. Yeah. Freon didn't know that, so he's just staying there. Yeah, you're there protecting her. Nether. Okay. She can actually talk to you too, but... You look, um... Mm, I guess this would be a nature check again. Nature check, alright. As they start to, um... It sounds like just at the, um... Start, they're just mage-handing things about kind of peeling pieces of fabric back and moving little bits and pieces uh nature well, 11 a, uh, a rule of a, a seven plus four so 11 11 um you can't you can't smell you can only see right and just kind of look all at senses it. oh all senses it nice says, let me just double check i can definitely see and i can speak and hear with my own voice voice of the chain master Perceive through its senses and speak through it in your own voice as long as you are on the same plane of existence. Very cool. Um, so yeah, you feel the same bout of disgust that comes over the rest. And then when you think about it, based on things you've sort of torn through and bilges while chasing rats and doing whatnot, it's probably not worse than some of the worst things you've seen there. Um, you will want to wash thoroughly after interacting with it. But um, there's always the off chance that something, something dangerous pokey, could yeah. grow in these. Something pokey or even something living that is attracted to that. That happens sometimes. You saw the grave worms in you know, your own hull. Um, so something like that could be present. But... Not very likely that would be unlucky. All right. Thank you. So the garbage pile. Uh, DM, I have a 15 for investigation. Total. A garbage okay. shoot. What a great idea. <laughs> Incredible smell you've discovered. Um, 
the you are able to uh, that's good and you able to pick little light bits finding all the five pound pieces kind of moving them aside but you reach one thing that seems to be an intact leather strap leading beneath this um sort of uh uh, this this pile it's stuck in gunk of other things that have begun to fully break down into their basest foulest uh, protein gels basically I'm sorry it sounds um, like think there it's... was a bit of a confusion I'm I'm using my mage hand to write in the book with my quill and oh. holding the book in one hand and then digging through the pile with my other hand gotcha. I'm using the mage hand for the trash <laughs> gotcha so you find this strap that this is something and you pull it up and a um, sort of hear this hissing sound as you've released sort of a pocket of gas within this um, within this pile of refuse and I do need you to make a constitution saving throw as it wafts into this room is anyone else within 10 feet of the pile um, if I'm so still in the hallway I'm not right I um, probably would need to be right behind him in order to be doing anything useful so sure um, well, those I of you them. within 10 feet please make a constitution saving throw <laughs> that shit. with rolled... your crack and dice if you want to have any oh, hope yeah. of succeeding <laughs> I did roll with my crack and dice and I rolled an 18 plus 2 is 20 just because it's going to be an interesting Ooh. sort of thing I'm going to roll. I... I'm going to say that uh, nethers um, is within 10 feet I rolled a 17 plus 1 at an 18 very nice. I can't hear you, Nene. I, well, I rolled a nat one. Darling, you don't really look like you're within 10 feet on the map. Yeah, no, you're not within 10 feet. Yeah. Never mind. Nether rolled a five. Mm -hmm. Nether, you're um... discovering the, the drawbacks of this particular ability. <laughs> That wouldn't affect you, though. You can perceive through its senses. Uh, it wouldn't physically. You would feel the sensation, but it's a. This is not. Um, this is not magic or anything. This is actual. The inhalation in the physical body. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, um, well, those then, of you who okay. uh, uh, came below, if anyone came below twelve, um, you are currently poisoned as this um you kind of start to cough and then an awful knot kind of just sticks in your stomach it's a thick gaseous thing and you feel it sort of dripping down the back of your throat whatever this is that's been um aerosolized and released but Ew. pulling the strap out you see what looks to be about half a chunk of a le of leather armor it looks like it's almost been severed through the torso and you have to imagine that this was actually the cause of death of whoever wore this in the past but attached to it is a large pack as well um so half of a piece of leather armor and a backpack you pull out of the pile well this looks promising guys absolutely does the uh armor have any markings on it at all um, looking over it, um, make an investigation check then for just the armor. Well, we'll, we'll go with, um, we'll loop this all together actually sure. with, um, um, yeah. So Melvin, as you are looking and uh, Mariah is kind of pointing out, you see that there is a, um, small inscription on the leather armor. Um, it looks to be one moment a sort of wing curved winged dagger that is set ever so subtly into the straps and buckle um, the dagger also down has a round pommel and then it looks like a snake's head biting um, the sort of round pommel Um, let's see if anyone would like to make a history check. Why not? Or Melvin, are you, are you proficient in that? 
I am. Uh, you, yeah, I, I have. I've let a, yeah. read a lot of books, after all. Okay. I, I do have read a lot of books, Sarayan says from the hallway. <laughs> I will offer my uh, assistance in this matter to uh, the person who probably knows more than I do on this subject. <laughs> I'm also gotcha. gonna. Can I also make a separate roll, DM? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyone, anyone can roll. Cool, Z's. With my new Kraken dice that just came in the other day. New ones. Yeah. Thanks, Kraken dice. Ha, mm-hmm. oh, lol. It's a three plus two is five. All right, we've got a five. What else do we have? Uh, with advantage, I have a 17. 17. Okay. 17. Uh, Melvin, you have seen this. Um, not not off, not always openly worn. Um, it, they're known for both their brash action and for their secretive plots. This is a symbol of the Zentarum. Not these fuckers again. <laughs> Sorry. I hate them. <laughs> you can't escape. God damn it. The great sort of mafia of thieves, assassins, strong men, and basically mobsters in uh, Faerun. It's my, my second cousin's mm. made manifest in D&D. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the Beals, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 uh, that's the it, Chicago's the Beals. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Boston's the Beals. Uh, we got nothing to do with this that. The Beals, yes. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> the Beals. <laughs> it's the Beals. Uh, do, oh, does, does this symbol look familiar to anyone else? Because I, I, don't, I don't like the look of this. Good uh, name. Vaguely familiar. That. Although, I, as a player, I'm not sure how much out of character slash out of game knowledge I should know in this case. So, as a um, <laughs> as a smuggler by trade, spoiler alert. Sorry, um, <laughs> you would know. You would have crossed paths with them okay. many times. Perhaps even crewed with some of them, but um, you know that just. It's it's those people that you don't always have to worry about as long as you think that they're that they are going to get their cut and that their benefit is assured. It's fine. They will oftentimes have your back if you are paying them. Indeed, they will typically honor their contract with frightening efficiency at times. Um, but you always want to keep them at arm's distance if possible. Yeah. It's a, a scary group. And or several bags of money at distance. Indeed. Uh, yeah, that's that is a nasty group. Um, don't want to get on their bad side if you can avoid it. Um, cross paths before, try to avoid. Um, so that doesn't bode well. Let's check their pack. Oh, okay, I'll open up the pack. Uh, within the pack, um, there's a sort of tightly rolled, um, thin bedroll. There's a tinder box, some torch and torches, um, a water skin, some rope, anything you'd want to go exploring, essentially. It's an explorer's pack. There is also... Um, a pouch with about five gold pieces and a nice piece of topaz. I'll add that to the loot pile if it if roll twenty ever reloads for me properly. It's kind of shitting the bed right now. I'm having a um, a slowdown on that as well, but that's yeah. all right. So that is what you find. Oh. Um, nothing else. The body has sort of joined the now commingled um, <laughs> slurry yeah. of decay. Mostly the leather being having been cured and such has survived, or you know, maybe they ate most of the body. Hard to say, but um, Melvin, are you the sort of mage who can kind of clean things off magically? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and he uh, sort of has the uh, mage hand flip a page in his book, and you hear a bunch of pages flipping, although nothing actually happens. Um, and you uh, see his hand magically clean off as he casts prestidigitation to clean his hand that was in the gunk. Delightful. Um, somehow, as annoying as it is that they're involved, I'm actually not entirely surprised, you know, given all of the, you know, potential upheaval going on in this region, especially where as far as economics are concerned. If there's money to be had, they probably want it. And it sounds like control over the money is kind of one of the big sticks in this whole bullshit situation. So there's that. Hey, Priam. Hi. What do you know about the Zentirum? I've never heard of it. What is it? Oh. That's just a name I happen to hear. Where where is it? Is it a pl is it a place, a city? I uh, I think it's a people. A people. Never heard of them, huh? No. I'm s My life's mainly been growing up around a village. Fair enough. Why? Why do you ask? Um no particular reason. Um, it might come up later. Well, okay. And anyway. so with that, you have discovered that. <clears throat> Anything else that you two are doing in the throne room while your companions are digging through garbage? Uh, just Not all of the companions. <laughs> He's just relaxing, keeping well, an eye out. Doesn't want to do dirty work. <laughs> no, that's sure. for peasants. <clears throat> Nether's like literally in a corner, like with her sitting, sitting down, with her knees drawn up and her arms around them, and her um, staff sort of in her lap, mm. just sort of watching the group, um, just making sure that if anything happens, that she's aware of it and can. Find yeah. out, uh, and yeah. Prion's making sure of what? Um, he was just making sure that obviously that Nether's getting some rest and stuff, and making sure she was safe while the others went off. Okay, just try. You know, he's just being on guard. He's he's at ease, but you know, he's just relaxing, yeah. but keeping an eye out. Cool. So you have some time now. Again, you are invited to and expected to say or to stay for this banquet um sorry will mention as well that indeed you are <clears throat> at least one of you is expected to stay and sit as a guest of honor to have the sort of premier courses and to sit in um with the queen with otho kent with uh, Saurif himself, with um, Varshach, and some of the other ranking member of Lizard Folk. You will have to decide which one of you that is. However, there is still some time, and as Saurif mentioned, you have some time to try to curry favor with the Lizard Folk. Another thing he will mention is that Otho Kent has also summoned um, representatives from other aquatic races to this place um dealing with them helping secure their alliance or dealing with potential conflicts of interest might be another thing that you can do but i will tell you this um uh, as you have been making your way openly through the lizard folk layer right now a couple um locations that are besides just the regular accommodations, guardhouses, etc., that stand out are, first of all, a massive kitchen where things are being prepared. There is a nursery and hatchery 
where it seems very few lizard folk are very, very overwhelmed with the care of many, many baby lizard folk. A drill hall where they are training in their um, uh, with their new weapons. You hear that there are prisoner cells that are not empty. There's the garbage room, which you uh, looked at. And yes, that's about it. Those are the five other rooms um, that stand out. And a temple, excuse me. I still can't get roll 20. I've been trying to refresh for ages. So. Um, that's all right. We'll just keep going with what we got here. So. Oh, a temple. If only Talise were here. <laughs> Sarayan actually wants to go look at the temple because she's up here making her pilgrimage. She's trying to learn about the various cultures and religions of all land-dwelling folk. <laughs> okay, so as we go through this, um, currying favor or doing what you'll need to do will take some time. Um, you can go obviously look at the temple, but if anyone wants to spend the next couple hours trying to understand the lizard folk better help them with what they're doing or whatnot um it will it will take some time so think about that and who you might want to bring with you if indeed you want that um help action so heading into um the temple you all kind of shuffle past it as a group um while you are free to roam um th this is a this place is a little different there's that musty reptilian odor that permeates everywhere typically roasted meats and then a bit of um sort of mold and decay mingled but as you come here the sweet sense of incense starts to um to to um come to your senses as you look in here at the far end a lizard folk Two lizard folk are crouched before a stone altar. To each side of the altar are small lit burners, and a candelabrum holds four candles on the center of the altar. Um, there is a marine fresco of a w lizard folk warrior brandishing a club uh, behind the altar. Um, it's beautiful sort of tile mosaic that seems to have been made from various shells and pieces of bone, even wooden elements. And it's interesting how the interplay between the sheen of the shells and bone, what's polished and what's rock, and what is matte, like wood and um, such, it all interplays into this actually remarkably beautiful mosaic, which spans the entire back of the wall, almost lifelike at times. This is what you see. Sarayan, as a Triton, has a deep appreciation and love of all things beautiful, but particularly works of art and architecture, because Persona was all about the architecture. So she heads over to the wall. And again, I hope something that's coming through is that she's a very tactile creature. And so she begins to kind of run her webbed hand along the wall, kind of getting a sense, not only visually, but physically for the the materials that the lizard folk have used to create this beautiful mosaic. Okay. Um, the two who are kneeling there in prayer will look up at you a bit shocked and kind of look at you with wide eyes. Um, you have gone beyond the altar that they are praying to and suddenly they look up with um just shock and surprise and maybe anger as suddenly you just have your hands all over this <laughs> sacred mural and you see them going oh, ah, what, 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 what. Sarayan takes a quick step i'm i'm very very sorry i just think it's incredibly beautiful i didn't mean to disturb anything i'm just i'm appreciating I apologize. And... Make, a per make a persuasion check. <laughs> okay, with my Kraken dice. Go for it. All right, we'll use the big boy d20 this time. And I have to find my dice tray. Ah! Find my dice tray. Dice tray underneath my desk. Okay, I'm ready. Ah! It's my second three. <laughs> Oh no! 
Oh, wait, hold on. I definitely have a modifier. <laughs> Plus four, seven. Unfortunately, with the seven, they will kind of um, start to... Uh, they're not aggressive. These both seem to be old lizard folk, but they kind of start to shoo you out of the temple at this at this moment they uh your your explanation notwithstanding they are not happy with what you have um what you have done and simply gone to walk behind their altar and i'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry um on her way out she kind of tries to get melvin's attention Psst, take take notes over whatever you can we'll compare later and she kind of bows <laughs> out of the room they're just kind of like uh, 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 bows backwards out of the room. Yeah, bow, bow, bow. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and once that's done, they um, kind of look at the rest of you and then turn around, go, and then resume kneeling before the altar. I'm in this sort of early stage of our free time. Um, I kind of want to take a pass and see if I can take note of who the guests seem to be. I know we did notice this um, singular blue man group off to the side, um, but uh, if there are any <laughs> other... Um, He's just uh, sitting there banging on the wall. Oh, so that's okay, but I can't touch the mosaic? <laughs> If okay. you judge it with some style, okay. maybe. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just uh, looking for the other non-lizard folk. Um, seeing who who might be worth talking to. <laughs> okay. It's like the difference between someone's tapping their foot in the back of the sanctuary and then, like, in the middle of mass, someone just wanders up and, like, what's in here? Opening the tabernacle. <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> That is Serayan's vibe. <laughs> oh, indeed. Um, He's obtuse, just, just go, but just not go straight for the Jesus crackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'm which Catholic. of these <laughs> is which of these is the body of your God? <laughs> Could I have one? <laughs> the um, oh my, maybe not quite that severe, but uh, definitely <laughs> treading on um, their hallowed ground. So, Mariah. You will be, you can be brought to sort of the edge of this series of subterranean lakes where you saw this sea elf before. Mm -hmm. um, and indeed, there are a number of deep pools that seem to, at one point further in the distance, connect to maybe some type of estuary that leads out of the underground. But Regardless, these would be perfect gathering places for any sort of aquatic races. Unfortunately, they're kind of covered with, uh, most of them covered with kelp, a little bit of um, uh, algae at the top. Mm. It's very still water. Um, you can see at the far, far, far end near the entrance to these series of pools, uh, a lizard folk sort of patrol kind of coming up and out of the water and you see further off what looks to be actually just a big fish-like head poke its way above the water kind of look at you with this big old round eye and then sink back into the water there's clearly movement here um but um unless you actually fully enter and go walking around or in fact swimming into these sub um these subterranean pools mm. it will be hard to tell who's occupying them at the moment but that's what you get at first glance i sense a need for someone who swims better than me prion and or saran i'm gonna find those dudes <laughs> okay and, uh, busy saran is tables and stuff peeking her head inside the temple, just like still trying to see what she can see from the doorway. Okay, okay. All right. So Come it sounds here, girl, like girl. It, it sounds like we're falling into some parts. So this again, 
these different tasks, these different um, things that you do will probably take some time. So it sounds like Mariah, you're thinking maybe talking to some of the ambassador races that seems to have piqued your interest. Um, yeah. Prion, maybe helping the common people sounds like maybe yeah, what you're wanting to do. Lift tables and prepare. Like if, if obviously if there's tables being prepped for food and lifting and stuff, he's helping out as much as he can while Nick okay. is sitting there relaxing. Um, and it sounds like Sarayan's pretty fixated on this temple. Well, she's just not strayed far from it. She would be willing I, to I'm be diverted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just I, I, feels I'm she's kind get... of she's kind of standing outside looking sad, forlorn. <laughs> just trying to look in without getting noticed and shoot out again. They they don't as long as you don't walk behind the altar, they don't seem to pay you any mind. They simply stay there and resume their prayers or meditations or whatever they're doing. So Yeah, she feels pretty uh pretty badly so she's just standing outside <laughs> okay okay that's when uh ask her to help me <laughs> yeah that's when mariah comes and grabs you Great. and Neris and melvin do either of you have an idea based on what you've seen or what you've heard of based on the description uh and Neris will be exploring trying to find out any information she can basically trying to stealthily go through their stuff and get a feel for if they're planning on attacking just anything she can gather she's not gonna okay. steal anything don't look at me like that <laughs> she's just exploring <laughs> so are you actually going to plan to break and enter into the quarters of any of the no. leaders <laughs> God. Well, only if the doors are unlocked <laughs> she's not trying to cause a fight she's just exploring <laughs> Is it breaking and entering if the doors are unlocked? No. <laughs> no. no, it's just entering. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. just entering. Um, all right. Uh, so, um, Inaris, as you are, are you bringing anyone with you or are you just kind of slinking around by yourself? Slinking around by myself. You are given access to the entirety of this place. So as you make your way around, you run into some doors that um, are indeed guarded, some that are just plain locked, some that probably locked and guarded as you, some of them you walk towards and the lizard folk just stands there and um, you know, you can open the door and walk in. Uh, it's another barracks room or it's another sort of little bedroom that's looking pretty boring. Two of the doors you approach um, in different parts of the lair. One of them you approach, and there are two. One there's one lizard folk, and as you kind of just reach out to look at the door, they just look at you like, "What are you doing?" And kind of grab their spear a little bit tighter, and you think, "This is probably not where I'm supposed to go." Another one will have two guards posted at it, and it will be a double door. These there are two doors that you think, "Okay, those are off limits," based on the reaction of the lizard folk. Making your way into sort of the northwestern area, um, the tunnels get a bit narrower and you bypass a room that looks similar to the first room that you saw upon entering this place. It's just basically a room carved out of the side of the hallway, no door, just an empty area with a couple benches, um, a weapon rack and such. It looks like a guard station. And indeed, there are a couple lizard folk looking there, and you hear this odd sound. It's almost like singing coming from the other side of this door. This door is not just simple wooden construction. It is, um, it looks like almost like it has been removed from another structure. Perhaps it was a secured door on a ship at one time. It has this nice perfectly rounded top it is reinforced with iron um, strapping all around it and um, they seem to have altered the tunnel to fit it perfectly but you think this is kind of a prison and you hear just a uh singing song just na 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 kind of coming from beyond this door is the voice male or female it seems male does it sound human or what language is it in? Uh, you, you're hearing sort of nonsense syllables 
at this point. Is the door locked? Uh, no, you can go in if I'm you would like in. to. Um, there are a couple of lizard folk who turn an eye towards you, but don't really seem to pay you that much attention. And as you open the door, you see... Moment. Is your roll twenty working? It's down for everybody. I just yeah, checked. no, we're we're just we're going on uh, we're going on notes and on on prep. So it's like you see down. I've looked on down detector. It's nothing, 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 and then seven yeah. o'clock. Just <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple. Up. There are a couple. Um, look to be five cell doors. Um, the two on the end look in, like interestingly designed. There's a bit of water sort of occasionally lapping and spilling over the top of them. Almost as if the door, when closed, can be filled with water to house a race that would otherwise die on the land. And you hear you hear this um, uh, this sound of just sort of muttering song. And there's you look through the first cell and there is this dirty human who is... Um, a human male, quite rotund, sitting there with a tiny little stringed instrument in his hands. And he's just sort of, uh, and he turn, um, just kind of feeling through a melody, it seems like. And he turns to you and says, Drow? Human. In the jail? Drow. What is that you got on your cloak there, you pretty little drow? What is on my cloak? <laughs> what it's is up he to you. At? <laughs> we hate He's just kind of looking at you, and his <laughs> eyes are just kind of wondering, what's on your cloak, drow? Uh, nothing? The hell are you looking at? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing on the cloak of the drow in the jail. And he kind of goes, huh. All right. Uh, nothing. Nothing on the cloak and a cloak on a drow and a drow and a jail and a jail and a lair and a lair and a hole and a skull and a mound and a mound and a swamp and a swamp and a bog and a bog down in the valley. Oh, oh, ho, oh, the rattling mirror, the biting mirror of dead men. Oh, ho, oh, the rattling mirror, the beer down in the valley. Oh, <laughs> as he's strumming on his guitar. <laughs> First of all, that's amazing. Nothing again, isn't again, a really again, good. Again, 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 again. Um. <laughs> Nothing on a cloak and a cloak and a draw and a draw and a jail and a jail and the lair and the lair and the hole and the hole and the skull and the skull and the mound and the mound and the swamp and the swamp and the bog and the bog and the mirror and the mirror down in the valley. Oh, oh, ho, the rattling mirror, the mirror in the valley. Oh, oh, a mirror and a rattling mirror and the mirror down in the valley. Oh, oh, ho, the rattling mirror, the mirror in the valley. She'll actually clap for him. Who the hell are you? Pretty drow? I mean, flattery will get you somewhere, maybe. Why are you in Oh, here? flattery gets me everywhere. You're not that great looking, so I don't know why. But why are you down here? This is why bards get a bad name. Maybe <sighs> he's hot. We don't know. I know. I'm like, Peter, give me a description. Like, is he hot or... No, no he's um, rotund he's, and dirty. He's got... He's balding. Um, in a pretty few... way. The few black hairs that he has are kind of slicked, oiled back over the top of his head. Um, yeah, he is. Why? If you describe me, I'm going to kick you. No! No, 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 no. I was um, like... He has clothes, too, that are, they're, um, they're clearly finery. He has this um, beautiful uh, coat that at one time was probably beautiful, all set with... Um, uh what's it's kind of like a paisley design it was probably at one time felt he has a um ascot tie and a sort of a frilled collar but there are numerous food stains on the frilled collar um there's definitely like an oil patch on the side of the um sleeve a couple tears so he's dressed in really fine clothes but it looks like he's covered in scraps of food at the same time so rich but very messy and indeed sort of uh 
um like louis anderson who really let himself go yeah something <laughs> like that and uh yeah so he kind of gets himself up and comes forward uh looks at you and uh so anyway what's your name pretty drow i'm grigori you're what grigori you heard of me gregory is that what you're trying to say uh, uh what i'm trying to say is grigori which is my name so you know what? grigori the one that uh the one that chants <laughs> Grigori. <laughs> but enough about me. Tell me about you, pretty drow. What are you down here for? Ah, uh, how, how did you, you know? Lizards, exactly. Well, I mean, they didn't take too too well to me wandering in here you see i was looking for this i don't know this place i've I, i've heard it's down here in the, the swamp somewhere um i see there's this dumbass paladin named darius he had a map of this place and it was in the swamp and it was full of um well it was it was a. Uh, I don't remember what was in it exactly but it was gonna be good and idiot just gave me the map um long story uh you know not fit for this situation anyway so darius is out of the picture i'm here i'm gregory i've got a map something really cool you want to go check it out pretty drow that's disgusting do you still have the map yes can i see it well see some of these lizard folk i i guess they like the sort of the, the music you know all this kind of stuff and so i hit it um they let me keep the this he's playing the guitar and um i hit it inside but i can't get it out now unless i either break the strings or smash the whole thing open and i mean what am i gonna do if i can't keep them entertained they might eat me or something well why don't you hand it to me and let me see if i can pull the map out no, I'd trust you with my life, really. But actually, I wouldn't. Why would I do that? Why not? You have nothing else to lose and nothing else to gain, really. I have a few gold pieces I can let you have. Maybe you can buy your freedom. <laughs> like, that's going to do me a lot. Yeah, gold pieces right now. Yeah, that that's great. Good. I don't that's know if helpful. I the part where I said you could buy your freedom, but, you know, humans typically aren't the brightest creatures in the world. Okay. Ooh, ooh, cold, making me shiver, drow lady. But I like you. Um, yes. Right, make make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for that duh natural twenty. It's gonna come. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> You're probably gonna have to roll it physically. So. Oh, I can try to roll it physically. Yeah. Unless exactly. you've already rolled. I was about to say I've already rolled, but I want the It's action. in it's in D and D beyond. Yeah. You can't oh, hide, is it Nene. Now? You can't hide. Can't. All right, what is it? Let's hear it. It's a ten, but I just wanted to roll physical dice. I know. You always trust the Kraken, but <laughs> what did you uh get otherwise? A ten. On the D and D Beyond. Oh, gotcha. A ten. Um yeah, all my rolls automatically go to D and D Beyond. Kraken v Kraken here. I mean, talking about Kraken dice and stuff. Um, one of us is going to get to roll with, with advantage. Thanks very much to Astral Hellbender. Hey, who has just donated five hundred bits. So, shall we roll? Who wins it? If we can't do it, we'll roll twenty. Kraken dice, anyone? Sure. Who's, who's not muted? We're all rolling. Let's do I it. A, I rolled an 18. Oh, you done it on okay, there. Yeah, I rolled a four. Who's not muted? I 17. also rolled a four. <sighs> 15. Okay, Jade. <laughs> that face. <laughs> oh, I can't move. Me. Oh, no. Jade's world is falling apart. No, Jade. Apart. Jade no, don't, don't, don't move me, camera. Jade. Something's happened. You, Jade. <laughs> Something's happened to me, camera. I can't move it. You broke it. Did anyone beat an 18? 
Nah. No, you've got whatever it is. It's like I'm winning in the uh, winning the in. inspiration. Thank you very much, Astral Hellbender. Way to go, Astral. What a good we friend you are. Just Thank you. Roll twenty, but roll twenty's uh, not playing. Should yeah, that's bad. all right. <laughs> it's it's all good. Um, so you hear that, and um, Grigory would say, "Nah, get me out of here." And then it's yours. For that, I'm keeping this. It's my only ticket to not dinner. We've already brought them dinner, though. They shouldn't want to eat you. Mm, they eat more than like once a day. It's uh, I'm, I'll probably be the next one. Lizard folk are beneath me. I don't keep up with how often they eat. Seems like a lot's beneath you. I don't know that I want to let you out now. Yeah, I know. I sometimes killing you and just taking it. Did I mention you're really pretty? At least a hundred times. Okay. Are you reading my thoughts? Yes. Shit. So I um, even if you let, even if I let you out, you're not going to give me the map. So you should just go ahead and give it to me now, so I don't have to <laughs> kill you for it. Oh, you're just kind of mean. No shit. Sorry, Anaris, you already failed the persuasion. He is doesn't look like he's gonna give it to you, but he will kind of say, "Well, if you get me out, it's yours. That's the deal." Do I think he's telling the truth? You can make an insight check. I'm gonna. It'd be pretty funny if he were like into it. <laughs> he You're kind of mean, but... and I like that. Oh, God. <laughs> Where has this character come from, Peter? Yeah, Peter. I don't know. Is it like <laughs> and and can any life? other characters like this character come along? Honestly, it's hysterical. Yeah, that's great. They might not all play guitar, but um They all have to play guitar. Why doesn't Shane play guitar? Now I'm upset. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Shane will be dead soon. <laughs> Wow. Oh, no. Tune in Monday nights to see what we're talking about. All right. Uh, Nerys, Watch um... me die. <laughs> What's your insight check? 23. He's telling the truth. He does really want to get out, but he doesn't trust you to, uh, to enough to give you the map outright. Shit. I'll, uh, I'll pick the lock. Really? I'll pick the lock. I got my thieves tool. Oh my god. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Alright. Uh, <laughs> make a thieves? Single Mariah's eyes just bore into the back of my head. Oh, more than the Mariah's <laughs> eyes. Make a thieves tool check while you hear the sound sort of from down the hall that says um, um, Heart is an unwise choice of ally. Did she hear that? Wait, drow. Who the hell is talking to me while I'm looking for my thieves tools? Come here. Do I look like a dog? You come here. I am locked in a cell. Oh, well, don't go anywhere, fat, gross man, and I go check out whatever voice is hollering at me. He's like, well, I'll be right here and have fun with them. And uh, you look and there is a creature. Um, I wish I could display it to you, but uh, descriptions. Wait, will... can you put it in Discord chat? I just wanted to add that not all fat men are gross. So. No, it's not a, it's, it's I'm not, not a, sure. I'm not, I'm, I'm not joking. body shaming him. It is, he is, uh, as was he described by person. someone who put it, who wished him in the game. Okay. So here's the thing is I'm really imagining like the King Zora from Ocarina of Time body type. <laughs> it's just like a giant. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> and when he moves, he's like, burr, burr, burr. And he can Spindly only move. legs, but surprisingly <laughs> spry for the yeah. disproportionate nature of his physical form. Yeah. 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 Um, he can jump around to a little five note tune like nobody's business, though. So um, 
and uh, he will play. So you will see this this creature that you've seen a number of aquatic races since coming to Salt Marsh and adventuring with your friends. Some of your friends are these aquatic races. This creature could best be described as a fish person. The um, way that the lips are thin and sort of hinge and jut out from the side of their mouth and their ears are almost like almost like webbed fins coming out there are these appendages that hang down to the side like the edge of a bullfish there are um well i guess fins everywhere this is really a fish man and it has this awful set of beady eyes in its face and as it sits in this cell um, which is half of water. It kind of <laughs> rises up out of it and puts some webbed hands around the bars and says, <sighs> Right. Are you there? Yes. You're in trouble. <laughs> you smell that. She takes a step back. The food. The bard wasn't wrong. It'll be you. Next. I can help you escape. I don't need to escape. Clearly, I'm on the other side of the jail. How for how long? You trust these scaly things? No. I'm also not alone, so... Oh, you are, though. Look. You need to get out of here. And I can help you. They won't let you leave. But I know. The hidden way's out. It's how we got in. You Will you help me? Do you have a map or anything to trade? Why would I waste my time helping you? And mm, I can help you survive. Please, let me out. What did you get locked up for? <laughs> the queen is evil. We have, to, we have to kill her. That was my mission, but I failed. Now I have to escape, so we can be sure that our awful offspring do not conquer this entire region. Do I think he's telling the truth? Make another insight check. Honestly, I like the bard better than him. I want to be that bard. No, I was going to say I want to be that bard, but I don't. <laughs> I want the guitar skills of that bard. <laughs> Not a lot of skill Ask there. Ask for Thank lessons. Um... <laughs> From the bard. <laughs> no thanks. Hey, I could probably teach you. <laughs> and insight is coming out, out to be what for an heiress? Um... He seems sincere. Mm, I'll think about your offer. Who, el who else is in here? There are two of these fish people. There is what looks to be a dead um, lizard folk in one of the cells. And then the bard Grigory. Grigori, probably pronounced so. Um, DM, with uh, Rule 20 uh, finally back up and alive, could we maybe get a little bit of a map update for where this uh, sure. particular shindig's going down? Yes, of course. Um, oh no. Why'd I do yes. that? random rooms for you oh and no and stuff. oh no oh no <laughs> this is happening over here 
I have one of those back buttons on my mouse that I accidentally click at the worst times. And you would be in this passageway here, anyways, so. And so these last two cells are where these creatures are, and they are, um, well, here you can see. This is the one you were talking to. And this is another one that is in there that seems to just be lurking in the water, <laughs> saying nothing. Okay, well, since... Well put. <laughs> since he's not said anything, I'll walk down there and... So what have you got to say? Well, this is the one you've been talking to. The <laughs> other, the blue <laughs> one... The... He was, I was like, waiting, I Sean! I was like... The creeper. <laughs> Tell me he does it. Do you mean... <laughs> Um, the other one will simply look up and say, That one speaks for me. No interesting story. Also, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, there's a giant fly swatter incoming for your little fairy friend. <laughs> uh, in other words, rocks fall. Uh, so, Inaris. I guess I'm going to mosey on back down to uh, Grigory here and resume attempting to pick the log. Now that I finally figured out where my these tools are. Okay. Go ahead and make a Thieves' Tools check. You know, as before, that sort of behind you out this door are a couple of lizard folk. Can we have a look at Grigori? Yes, can I see Gri Grigori now? Wait, where'd he go? Pop it back up. Okay. Does he have a mullet? Wait, he does. Where is he, where's he at? <laughs> is that actually his uh, character art? Well. Um, is is a little last minute, so okay. oh, not looks, my part. Looks, looks, that looks great. Oh, I didn't get to see it because it, it's not possible. What a charmer! <laughs> so, all right. So I have <laughs> never used thieves tools <laughs> on here. Okay. Before. Um. So Sorry. it'll be a dexterity roll. Plus your proficiency bonus. So, are you proficient uh, in? As long as you're not expertise in stealth, it'll be the same as stealth or sleight of hand. If you're proficient in those, I'm expertise in stealth. All right. So, go ahead and just roll a d20. Okay. So, <laughs> gross. That's a five. All right. Plus your dexterity, which is a dex modifier. Yeah. Three and your proficiency bonus is two. Three. Uh, yeah, two. Sorry, that was my initiative. Three. It's two. So ten. Unfortunately, this lock, you, you try and try. It's a bit too sturdy. Um, you feel like you were a bit hasty in trying to turn the tumbler. Um, you didn't quite get a good enough lock on the pin, and as you try to turn the tumbler, your tool starts to bend a little bit, and you think, ah, this is just. It's too. It's just a little too tough, and you pull it back out, and you are unable to pick this lock for now. Well, hey, thanks for trying. I want that map. I'm not done with you. Oh, good. It's disgusting. Just shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> Many have tried. Great. I, and she'll attempt it again. Uh, you, um, that is your attempt for this point. Um, we can't just sit here rolling mm -hmm. over and over and over again. You will have to return at a later time after sort of, um, checking over your tools, maybe fixing the, um, the, the tension rod, which is now bent from the force of this, um, uh, and try again at another time. Prion. Hi. You like to fight? I only fight when I need to. You're pretty good at it. 
Uh, Are you pretty good at uh, evaluating others who can fight? I'm not sure. I'm still new to this myself. I think there's... I think there's a group of lizard folk somewhere close by that are working with weapons. Seems that things are going pretty well right now, but there's always a chance that we could all end up as enemies. It'd be nice if we could maybe give an accurate estimate of their fighting capabilities, if we're ever asked. You want to come with me and maybe take a look? Sure. Let me just put this table down. <laughs> so, uh, while this has been happening, um, just sort of flying around, sort of checking out where everything is, uh, Nether would have liked to have mapped out as much of this layer as she possibly can. And so I'll leave that to you, DM, as to how much that would be. Okay. Um, I will rel um, reveal pretty much anything that you're get into. Including, um, so... If there are any doors that are locked, um, maybe wait a few moments for somebody else to open it and then slip in and slip out. But other than that. Yeah, over time, this is not too hidden. So uh, o way over to the western side are the three pools where you see um, some interesting looking creatures of different aquatic races all seem to be gathering in their own little areas. That it's is like a, a burrow. Over there. Yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, we have... Let's see what else is revealed to you. Down over here on the southern side is where the temple is. There is a door that you were not given access to off of the temple. Uh, you were... Basically, everything that I'm revealing is what you were given. Given access to. Access to. Got it. I mean, general insight check, DM, um, you know, I don't think that people are plotting or anything. Does it, it doesn't, how tense does it feel? Does it feel like everyone's <clears throat> safe? Um, it depends on where you are and who you talk to. Um, We've spent most so, of the time, obviously, in the uh, throne room, so... Yeah. Ulthakent is quiet, contemplative, mostly. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm revealing... Um, revealing areas at the same time here. I mean, I suppose mainly... The three lizard so they're folk. they're not none of them are forthcoming, but there is a tension. Um, the lizard folk look to you with they're they're nervous, they're distrusting. There has also been the talk of two recent invasions on their home, which they are nervous about. They seem there's as you've been lifting tables and stuff. There's been this sense of being short staffed, like there's not enough people here to do what needs to be done. Yeah, um, and that's kind of the general sense that you get there's a uh, there's obviously they're happy right now because they're about to have a festival of sorts but there like i said is also a reticence a sort of um general sense of anxiety about all of the lizard folk especially the commoners okay i suppose it's the warrior as well as if he's looking a bit twitchy uh, he is keeping very close watch on the Queen and on Saurith. Yeah, understandable. Um, as this happens, Inaris, are you looping back up with the rest of the group then after being unable to pick the lock? Yes, I am okay. going to go specifically looking for Mariah to see if she knows him since they both play instruments. That okay, I wanted to 
All people who know in, who play instruments know <laughs> that, that is a fact. <laughs> yeah, y'all are probably related, so she she probably has good information. Excuse I'm gonna go. Excuse me. <laughs> Those of you I who are in any looking. sort of artistic field, I'm sure you know yeah. that feeling when um, parent or aunt or friend says, oh, my cousin also does this. Do you know them? That literally happened to me yesterday morning. Yep. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> At a medical appointment. They're like, oh, my, my like neighbor's son sings in Washington. I'm like, great, but we totally know each other. It's nice because they're trying to relate to you, but it's also super annoying, irritating. Uh, yeah. So, all right, where are we? So, Nether and Prion. Yes. Um, there is that sense of anxiety. There is. You get the feeling that it is a place that is arming itself for a impending conflict, but has also recently suffered losses. Better than I say, uh, they, they've obviously just had a fight. So what they're, did you say that? They're a bit. They're, they're struggling for people, for numbers. Would you say, how many more do you think there should be? Well, any idea? I'm guessing double. How many have they lost? Um, it's hard to say, but especially when you go over to... Oh, I didn't reveal this. This is like the um, sort of nursery and hatchery. It seems a little overwhelmed. Um, and uh, you see a, a few lizard folk that seem to be in, I guess, somewhat of a state of despair as well. It's that unmistakable um, look of someone who's probably um, recently lost uh, someone they care about, whether it be a good friend or even mate. Are we there at the nursery now? No, nope, I'm just saying this is just something I revealed. Um, it's a, uh, one of the places that I pointed out that may be a point of interest for those of you looking to help the colony where you might look to do that. Yeah. I'd say we're just walking around and I've, I suppose I'd be walking around quite a lot and helping where I can and then yeah Nether probably caught me back in the throne room I think sure. uh, I think they've lost a lot of people I mean there's not many warriors here well do you think we should investigate and figure out here if they are planning to attack Saltmarsh, or should we try to do something? I think, honestly, I, I don't think they'd even get that far. This place wouldn't even breach. Even though Saltmarsh doesn't have any walls, they wouldn't get close. You've seen the people walking around Saltmarsh. This is not, this is not a group that's ready for war. This is a group that's looking to survive but what if they were allied with other groups that is possible why but then I don't know I don't even know much about this new these other groups here they talk well they talk that obviously like there's humans attacking would you like to try to help them of course they've I know they've been aggressive towards us, but that's their nature. And they're just on the defense. I can understand why they're on the defense if they've lost half their people. We'd be the same. Well, I think I know a place where we could help. I'm listening. It would be something we could do that would not give them any sort of tactical advantage over us, but would still show our goodwill I'm listening how are you with children present company excluded I don't know I've, I've not had one I've seen uh, well let's go find out and I'll start sure. to lead him over towards the nursery 
um, DM, if I may jump in here, I was going to say that Melvin would have gone directly to the nursery after um, taking some notes at the temple. So they, Melvin is most likely there when they arrive. Okay. So you meet him there. We will reach a point. We're getting to a point now. You, you three kind of meet over by the nursery. Um, it sounds like Mariah has taken Sarayan and is headed towards some diplomacy. In Neris, is there um, something in particular you would like to do or a group that you would like to try to join up with for this? No, she's just going to find Mariah and let her know what she found out. Okay. But other than that, no, she's not going to help the lizard folk in any way. Understood. Um, so it, we have a group headed towards the... I guess ambassadors, the visiting pools of the aquatic races, and one headed towards the nursery. Um, we are going to, before we go into this little series of skill challenges, we are going to take our break. Um, but team here and cast, think about the fact that the opinions were not necessarily high of you when you entered, and you have earned some trust, but there are still things, a few things going against you. It will be made known um, as you are wandering around. You will run into the lizard folk who you put on a jolly boat without the weapons that they had gone on a mission to source and deprived them of that. Um, revealing, though she has not said it, she hinted at it. Othakent knows that it was you who denied them their last shipment of weapons. Helps that you gave the payment back, but still, they were very much hoping for those. So there are a few things working against you as you try to earn the, not just um, tolerance, but trust and allegiance potentially of these lizard folk. So whether or not you just do two tasks or maybe you break up into three groups of two might be something to discuss when we head back. Um, yes. Right, so resuming the party is in the depths of the lizard folk layer. Um, scouting it out a bit now, they've kind of revealed all the areas, found a few points of interest, found a dead adventurer from the Zentarim, and have found, I guess, dignitaries from a number of other aquatic races across the realms, all present here at the moment. But more importantly, now there is a um, feast assembling. But first... It is up to them to figure out how to gain the actual trust of this lizard folk colony. So they are um, exploring a bit and trying to figure out how to do that. As we resume, we will put spotlight on Melvin, who has gone looking towards the um, nurseries. Or the, I guess, nursery. Singular, as we would call it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Melvin, as you come here, there is clear chaos. Um, there are a couple of um, adults mingling about and at least a dozen or two dozen hatchlings running about. Um, one of the adults seems to simply be sitting nearly catatonic in a corner. Its jaw just kind of hanging open and... Um, in defeat as a young one just is hanging onto its jaw swinging back and forth as if its uh, jaw is a swing set its um, name is Ryan <laughs> indeed oh. you see a couple others chasing some around trying to feed them um, one pulls a young one off from a table as it is um, just grabbed a clay jar and trying to eat through the actual clay um, to get to whatever is inside. And a couple of the young ones are, you can't even, um, uh, they, they can't even get to. So they are doing things like um, wrestling each other and scratching in the wall, digging little holes in the dirt floor, etc. It is absolute um, chaos. And <clears throat> here's a little baby lizard folk image for you all. Oh, that's Fireball. Adorable. It's so cute, though. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> you evil, evil Can person. Solve the problem. That's rude. Can we have You one? killed the younglings. <laughs> no! <laughs> I am... This is not turning into my one. That's the I opposite. slaughtered them like animals. The women <laughs> and the children. 
so true. Oh. Right now. And you'll save one, and it'll travel with you, and you'll have to teach it how to speak. Ah! Amazing. I'm really sad not, now. Not happening. Everyone, everyone, hit up, um, hit up Elena in Discord with the prequel memes. She's a she's a connoisseur. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so that is what you see in the uh, in this nursery right here. Um, I think I'm gonna, I'll go sit down sort of on the floor, sit cross-legged with my book in my lap over here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start casting, uh, prestidigitation over and over, making, um, little sensory effects, little, uh, puffs of smoke, little soft, gentle music, sort of a, snippets of a lullaby, um, maybe a small shower of sparks like a like a mini firework has gone off um and just try to distract and draw attention from from the children okay <clears throat> so as soon as you do this there are grubby little hands reaching on your spell book there are hands in your face on your face little fingers reaching into your mouth just no sense of personal space. You are covered in a few, um, in, you know, no less than six to eight hands of tiny lizard folk. And I need you to make an arcana check to try to just maintain, be able to c properly execute the gestures, repeat the words as, again, um, little lizard folk hands everywhere. Uh, well, I rolled a 19, so that's a 24 total. Very well done. Um, even with um, hands on your wrist, even grabbing a finger, you're able to sort of complete the arcane gestures at times. And uh, pretty soon you're able to distract them away from just your body and um, sort of focus them on these effects that you're creating. And you have four or five of them sort of just jumping after little magical butterflies or looking around for sounds that have no clear source. Um, you have provided a little bit of um, distraction for them. Perfect. That's all I wanted to do. And I'm just okay. going to keep doing that. <clears throat> About uh, that time, you see... Um, Prion and Nether kind of come to the door, and you see that very thing. Um, a bit confused, a bit concerned, um, the lizard folk seem who are shepherding a great number of these hatchlings around, but simply the fact that they have less to deal with at the moment seems to bring them some relief, and they just say, whatever, they're not being hurt, fine. And that's what seems to be the attitude in this room at the moment. Nice. Uh, Prion will go sit down next to Melvin and, and obviously uh, and help Nether in as well. Obviously, Prion doesn't really know, 100% know that Nether doesn't need any help, but still tries to help out anyway and sees what Melvin is doing. And he opens his own hand and starts like... Um, like sort of like whisking some air and it suddenly turns into water and creates like a a seahorse in, in in water and then makes it jump through melvin's like smoke rings and whatever he's doing and start interacting and and mm -hmm. like landing like into the children's hands and then he'll get another one going and then send that one off and all of this is incredibly entertaining for the little hatchlings. Is um, now that Melvin has their attention, you don't need to make the the check because you're yeah. not quite as um, uh, beset by their um, oh, I'm tactile I'm curiosity. Yeah. You monster! Um, and you you see one of them in particular. Actually, you feel it sort of climb on your back and then just kind of sits on the shoulder of your armor and just kind of plops its way down there and kind of just licks your ear a little bit. I'll uh, tell him to hold out his hand or like show him to him. And then I'll click my fingers on the palm of his hands and then my seagull will suddenly appear there. But knowing that the, the lizard will probably try to bite it, it'll flick, quickly flick it back out. <laughs> and it does. It's like, ah.
and looks at you. <laughs> Pointing at its mouth. I kind of realized that that was probably going to happen. Uh, it'll pull out some like beef jerky rations or something and look to the mother and sort of like jester if, if I can give the little one some. They are barely paying attention. Um, and one is, if you gather it, one will kind of come over <laughs> and just kind of be like, whatever, and go away after she sniffs whatever you have. So. And some out to Littlands. All right, it, uh, and then we just and then in the we playground, them. eating it. Uh, the one especially um, gobbles it down furiously. Greedy little fucker. We're adopting. <laughs> <laughs> they clearly have like paperwork and like a, a streamlined administrative process for um, lizard folk adoption here. You should go find it. Yeah, they're clearly super concerned. <laughs> um, yeah, we just, I suppose we just, I don't know what Nether does. Uh, Nether has left. Oh, okay. All right, so the two of you stay. Um, is this what you are um, uh, planning to spend your time doing to help with the the, the lizard folk people? Yeah, that had been my plan. What are the mothers doing? Are they trying to achieve something? Are they struggling with something? or They are simply trying to care for the hatchlings, and they are outnumbered at least five to one. Okay, I'll stay there with Melvin and help then. Okay. That will, we will get to your role eventually. But first, we will shift spotlight over to Moriah. And, um, and excuse me, Inaris and Sarayan. Um, Sarayan, here's a question for you. Um, when you've interacted with other aquatic, um, based folk, um, do they sort of show a similar uh, disdain for um, those of us who live up here on the surface? As, yes. Um, yes. Great. So that's what I thought. Okay. Um, so that means you need to go talk to them. Sure. Because I'm self-aware enough to know when I'm not the right person to be opening my mouth. Um, that's, that's really brave of you to admit that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so... How about you go figure out who's here, mm -hmm. what they want, okay, and whether or not it's even worth me coming in there. Sure, and, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna hang tight for a sec, and if they don't want anything to do with me, that's totally fine. I'll go find something else to do. Okay, yeah, I think I can probably handle it. I'm trained in being a diplomat, so. But I'll go. I'll go check it out. Have you ever actually? Done diplomacy. Have you? Yes. I have two. Okay, bye. <laughs> she wanders into the waiting pool <laughs> and swims over to the first group of aquatic folk that she sees. I'm gonna kind of hang back um, over here and just kind of lean up against a wall and observe for a little bit. Okay, you see the form of the. Um... Actually, I have a handout for this too. Uh -huh. Of of this, um... oh. <laughs> <laughs> damn! Does she need help? Saran's <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, hi. That one. <laughs> Are you? Well, this one is the one looking utterly uninterested, leaning against the cave wall, um, arms crossed, looking aloof to everything. As you wade down into the water, then um, you are quickly sort of surrounded by zipping around you are four merfolk. Mm -hmm. These are actually what we would think of as mermaids. So they're up, they are bluish skin. They have, they're from the waist down the basically it's um body of a fish or like a uh, yeah 
and so they kind of swim around you and um do you speak aquan i believe i do let me just double check was the other reason i thought she should take a lead on that section <laughs> Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, um, just as a precaution, by the way, before, I meant to say this and then got distracted by talking. Um, before I go into that room, I want to uh, cast Enhance Ability on myself um, for Charisma. Okay. Eagle Splendor! We go where eagles dare. All right. Oh, okay. So I speak Common, Elvish, and Primordial. That, Primordial that encompasses Aquin, I believe. Love that it. Would be it's the Aquin. super language. Living, yeah. loving, learning. Amazing. If you are, if you have Primordial and you are a um, Triton, it would be the Aquin dialect, um, which is basically the pri the Primordial Sea language. Great. And so they will kind of go and swirl around you, and you will hear them say, um, speaking in this. Um, well, I guess very. It's sort of. Um, flowing um, it's both raw and precise though and at times wandering type of language very different vocabulary sentence structure than elvish or any of the um, quote unquote civilized uh, races it has um, fierceness of expression and also the uh, but a propensity to wander at times and they say Hello, Anchored. Hello. My name is Sarayan Alaranoth. Um, what brings you to the lizard folk's lair? <laughs> <laughs> she starts to laugh too. <laughs> so <laughs> formal. So heavy. Uh, Muscle weighs more than fat, so. <laughs> they laugh and say, hmm. We were asked to come. Have you had dealings with the lizard folk before? Have you been here before? It's my first time. We have not been here before. Was there a particular reason that you were asked to come? Was it just for the feast, or was there something else? You ask so many questions, Triton. I'm just trying to get to know you. Your anchor is so heavy. That's so the first time I've heard that. heavy. Your voices are beautiful. We are free, untethered. Right, I, I, I like down. it. I like it a lot. Um, maybe I'll try. I am free on tether. Ah! No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your song is of iron and stone. Just you like my not... sword. Hmm. I think Tell that us makes a sense. story, Triton. Okay. Sing us a song. <clears throat> There once was a Triton princess, and she lived under the sea. <laughs> she <laughs> she oh. fought for her so Oh, is that not is, is that not what you had in mind? Why? Make a uh, make a performance <laughs> check, Sarayan. What? I am make a performance low key check. losing my shit. <laughs> back in the mouth of the tunnel <laughs> you just start hearing brr, brr, they're under the water at the moment so um i sense it this nonetheless little, this little bubble comes up just... <laughs> <laughs> i rolled a 15 plus 2 17. Hey. Oh. <laughs> they charmed. laugh <laughs> like it's a joke and say <laughs> You are not so heavy as we thought. Yeah, I could be fun. I could be. <laughs> so rigid, mm -hmm. like sturgeons. This, hmm. 
We are untethered. We I are unbound, that. unanchored, unbuoyed. Mm. But when one hurts one, one hurts us all. So Othakent tells us. So we join, we help the effort. So we do not be anchored ourselves. Othakin mentioned that they had been attacked by smooth skins. Is that what you're referring to? Were your people also attacked? Hmm. Yes. But not by smooth skins. May I ask by whom then? Would it be better if I sang it? I could sing it. Yes. Sing us a song. <laughs> Iron <laughs> One. <clears throat> Who attacked your people? What did they do to you? Uh, I only know one melody, so. Of course. You are just a poor bottom dweller <gasps> you do oh. not float with the tides like us the tune <laughs> of the sand and silt is all you know triton we know wow. the Ella flow insulting. of every wave <laughs> oh my god bottom dweller i feel personally attacked <laughs> you don't gotta tell her that time that sebastian started you know like under the sea and Sorry. We invented steel drums down here. Um, <laughs> oh my god, that was Lion King. I hate myself. I have to go forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's my little dunce cap. It's my dice tray. <laughs> dice cap. Um. So. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag dice cap. <laughs> Kraken dice what, what? cap. What was the what was the the text of the song you just said? What were the? Um... Uh, it was, who attacked your people? Right. right. What did they do to you? And they swirl in kind of a um, circle around you too, and they say, "Not attacked us, but they might. Well, they will. They rise again." Some hear the call, others just want the blood. The devils of the deep, they are. You know their this name. This who again? <laughs> and they kind of it, it, all shoot around and um, in a flutter and <laughs> almost form a vortex around you. Did you say the who again? I thought so. Is that wrong? That's what I, it is. I thought it was this. Never mind. I like. I do like the Sahu again. It's. Never mind. I'm going away now. It is the U is before the A in the spelling. Yeah, that's what I was remembering. Sahu again. <laughs> Sahu again. I always thought it was Sahu. So anyway. Sahu um, Jin. <laughs> is it Jip or Gif, Mercer, guys? That's the I way mean. Matt Mercer pronounces it in in his little D and D Beyond thing. You, you click it and he goes. Sahuigan. <laughs> oh, I thought it was Sahuagan. I don't think so. Well, Sean, who are we, who are we to argue with Mercer? Emphasis anyway. <laughs> on the word. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the is on the wrong Yes, the emphasis is on the wrong There's a, um, yeah, you're distracted by a moment by a sigil on the wall, which fa quickly <laughs> fails. Sigil um, reminds me of a oh! sky on. Hark! A sigil! <laughs> being carried in a... I think it's a rite of passage for every DM to have a mispronounced yes, word absolutely. canonized in the uh, <laughs> memes of your, your party. People. Your, your people. Your uh, people. So they will say yes. After you mention that word, they swish around you and then give an affirmative. Would you fight them? Yes. The Tritons have always fought this to who again it is my duty of course i would fight them mm, and after you would let us be we could float and sway and swim the triton have ever had any issue with your people 
Hmm. I've been talking to the others. They are not so sure. Serene is deeply troubled by this assertion. Do you give your word? I give my word. You have my word. Make a persuasion check with advantage from your ridiculous songs. <laughs> <laughs> what? They were so good. <laughs> Maybe I'll add guitar next time and they'll be just as good as yours. <laughs> okay, so I rolled a 16 okay. and a 10. So the 16 gets it. And you said persuasion? Yes. That is plus four for a dirty 20. They seem satisfied and say... We will hold faith should Otho Kent bring you to the Alliance. Thank you. Goodbye. And they kind of start to flit around, chasing each other, singing songs, throwing stones at one another. They seem um, content in play at the moment oh. nifty do I continue on this <laughs> magical mystery um, tour so that is the first uh, yeah. and you kind of kind of emerge up and see Mariah and yeah. Neris I believe also walking up um, while, while she's down below singing deliciously <laughs> wonderful songs um, I I leaned up against the wall and I'm looking down in the water, watching the bubbles come up. I'm gonna look over at um, Blue Man over there. Um, Blue I Man Group. Think of it yeah, Blue Man Group. <laughs> I don't know why that's like solitary of... Blue Man Group. <laughs> yeah, solitary Blue Man Group. Um, <laughs> what's your issue? <laughs> Sliding in real cool here. <laughs> He kind of looks over at you and rolls his eyes, and looks down at the group. Surfer dude, surfer dude. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's like the real Shane from Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> he's like over it. <laughs> the real Shane. Ooh, a challenge. <laughs> hmm. It's just childish um you're gonna make me play the pronoun game here um what's childish <laughs> this whole game is boring so you're not in favor of alliances for safety then or you just don't really care <sighs> unfortunately we need Othokan's protection <laughs> nothing can be done about it is that why you're here too? No, you have castles and floating pieces of wood to help you. Um, fair point. Um, our purpose here is more testing the waters, so to speak. Um, get a sense of why they're gathering um offer our support if we can um we don't want to make trouble um you know just would rather see peace in the region and if that means you know teaming up with everyone else that's here then that's fine by me um but we heard some uh troubling rumors from um a fellow called duranthil that's what brought us here in the first place actually hmm. um so what did Duranthil have to say about the region <laughs> Duranthil had some concerns about um oh, 
what's the best way to say this? Um, rising aggression. Um, but just because someone's arming up doesn't mean they're necessarily going to attack their neighbors. They might have concerns of their own. And if those concerns are something that we can help with, then yippee. Aren't you a good neighbor? I do my best. Was there something you needed? Sating my curiosity. Mm, drink up. And he sort of moves towards you, gives you a sidelong look, and then walks past you and starts to walk away. Okay, also bye. passing Inaris. Not at him. What's that? I said Anaris will just nod at him. I don't know why my okay. mic is sucking tonight. No, you're alright. And uh, we'll come up and just kind of walk into this probably up around into this room here. Anyway. <sighs> and Daenerys rejoins. Daenerys, is there anything you would like to do? You kind of see Serayan emerging from a pool that looks like it's teeming with merfolk. And uh, Mariah walk, looking after that sea elf who has walked past. That, uh, is that your new boyfriend? I don't, wh why is that everyone's first conclusion? <laughs> um, no, it's not. Um, I don't, uh, flirt on the job. Anyway, uh, I feel... Here a, a, a right head now, emerges so... um, from the water and says, Oh, you should. And then goes back <laughs> down to the water. Been there, done that. Didn't go well. Anyway, um... <laughs> So, I don't know what I'm doing with myself right now. Uh, how are you doing? You want to come explore the you want to come explore the prisons? I found somebody rather interesting. Apparently has uh, a map. Uh, figured you might know him. Why? He sings. <laughs> Is he any good? No. She only knows good bards. <laughs> I have like quality. I have like, like standards. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know just every bard. Did he release a vinyl? <laughs> Mariah's like. Ugh. Oh my god. Does he play uh, the uke? <laughs> what's this instrument of choice? Um, oh, sure, why not? Let's go talk to the bard. What's to say, you don't um, seem particularly busy. No, I don't really seem to, uh, I, I mean, saran has got the aquatic people covered, and, uh, everyone else here hates people who have smooth skin, so, yippee. <laughs> Just like real life, I hate people with smooth skin. <laughs> sandpaper and start scrubbing Funny. Skin. All right. <laughs> Do you love me now? <laughs> Am I worthy? The, uh, all right. So Mariah and Inaris leave to head back towards the, um, uh, this is uh, towards the prison. I will say time is starting to grow a little bit thin. He's, the banquet preparations are getting nearer and nearer. It sounds like some of you are well into knowing what you would like to do. Um, but and besides uh, diplomacy, as Mariah and um, Inaris, are you going to head and explore and talk to the prisoners more during this time? Or what is your intention? That is my goal. I'm not sure what <coughs> Mariah wants to do. No, okay, I'm kind of second guessing that actually. Um, sorry, Aniris. Um, can we put a pause on that for a moment? Um, it's not going anywhere. No, that's totally fair. Um, I'm gonna walk back to the throne room. Okay, you probably maybe run into Nether along the way. Nether, are you, what are you doing? Uh, I was gonna go back to the throne room, but um, not if 
I'm just sort of walking around, trying to find something that I can contribute to. Okay. Uh, you find, among other things, there is one room near the temple. Some of these quarters here are wounded lizard folk are being kept as well. Hmm. Another point of interest. Otherwise, the main points of interest are the... Um, like the again the kitchen the drill hall where they are training the cells and um the nursery unless there is something else that um you have in mind is there perhaps a challenge to be had at the throne room otherwise i might go to the drill room um potentially yes um hmm uh, Saurive mm. and um, Otho Kent are there. Uh, hello, Mariah. Uh, where are you off to? Uh, head back to the throne room. I was. Have you talked to someone uh, in somewhere else? What have oh, you found? Um, well, I Surayan is uh, chatting up some mer folks, since you know the whole water talking thing. Not really my area. Um, I had a brief conversation with a blue-skinned fellow. I think he's a sea elf. Um, but he did not seem particularly interested in anything I had to say, so uh, that conversation ended quickly. Um, yeah, that's that. Where are you heading now? Yeah, back to the throne room. Um, kind of wanted to see whether... Um, whether it was sort of possible to convince uh, either the Queen and or Salreve, um about distinctions between smooth skins. Um, I am particularly interested in this whole Zentarum issue. Um, I would hate for them to think that, you know, one group coming in to fuck their shit up means that every group is going to come in to fuck their shit up. Um, to put it colloquially. So, you know. Well, I was going to go and maybe exchange information, but you're better at speaking than I am, so I'll leave you to it. Oh, well, you can come with if you like. You really could also aim head. one towards Otho Kent and one towards Saurive, if you would wish to speak to either of them separately. Do you want the queen or the old guy? I want the queen. Sounds good. Don't scare the bejesus out of anyone, okay? No promises. <laughs> Let's the nerves laugh. So, to the throne room then. Yep. Okay. I've got a question to ask, DM. Yeah. Obviously, when I was sitting there resting with Nether, would I have been able to get a short rest? No, it sounds like it's pretty active. So, oh, okay. um, at this point, um, it, that would have been ten. It would have been twenty-five or thirty minutes, probably max. And then you've been getting up, going, looking around. Um, there probably hasn't been time for a full hour. Right. So, in uh, the last one, I'm I'm just trying to sort of nail down what's going on. You can join someone else, Anaris, or you can do your own thing, or you can choose not to help at all and just watch. It is up to you. She's not feeling particularly helpful, so she'll probably just sort of hang back and watch. Got it. Doorway. Okay. So, um, go ahead. Actually, Anaris, um. Do you have any skill in medicine? A bit. Um, it might be worth um, seeing whether um, there might be any folk that need some patching up. If they've had several incursions lately, they probably have some injured. It's the sort of thing that Talise would do, um, but I imagine that you might have picked up some skills as well. Is Talise not with us then? I don't know where she is. <laughs> she's here. She's flitting about. She's in and out. Providing encouragement to all of you simultaneously. I, I 
suppose I can heal them if you want me to waste my spells on them. Oh no no you don't. I mean you don't have to use arcane. Per I mean here, I'll I'll get my um m uh, medicine kit out um and hand it over to um Inaris. Um use this if you need to. But you know it's just about minor patching up. Um see if anyone needs anything. Um just you know one more way to help. Just I use this in case I like cut myself because I'm a little bit clumsy with the you know knives sometimes. But I'm sure you could find something better to do with it. If I have to, you don't have I to. I'm not forcing you. I will. I want to help the scalies if we're going to be called the smooth skins. Uh... She'll flip her hair and just walk off. Where are these hurt things at anyway? <laughs> The they will. They they can point out to where they are there in the south. Excuse me, southwestern part of the complex, um, in some separate bedrooms. Where they're recovering. All righty then. It sounds like we have it all nailed down. So Melvin and Prion. Um, well, one of you may make an um. Arcana check. Oh, Melvin definitely. Do I get advantage because, um... Are you proficient? I, I am proficient. Well, I'm not, but I did do some pretty cool stuff, so no, I can't help you. Indeed. I liked it, okay. but, um... Proficient. So, um, yes. Then is, proficient. He is there doing his things, so you can... You may roll it at advantage. It's not a standard help check, it is a... Okay. Proficient. 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 Yike. Um... Proficient! An 11. <clears throat> All right. I rolled a four and a six. <laughs> Not Can't super great. You, anyway. yep. um, you are soon overwhelmed, and there is um, this one particular, uh, or there are a couple of the lizard folk who have to pry them off of you. There's at one point you actually get worried that a few pages might be ripped out of your spell book. Um, and you kind of have to push one away who kind of falls over then and starts crying. You haven't completely failed in your task. It's not utter failure, but it is not a resounding success either. The, the scales land neutral. Scales. <laughs> Sarayan, speaking of smooth skins, uh... There are also um, a detachment of Lokatha, fish people, who are here, and a group of um, very burly, aquatic, um, goblinoid type of types of creatures called um, Coalinth. Mm. They seem spoiling for a fight, the Koalinth. The Lokatha just kind of minding their own business. For you, this will be pure negotiation for some time. Um, with assuming if you would like to try to convince the Koalinth to stay, they seem more martial. The Lokatha, the fish people, seem more like hunter-gatherer, simpler type. Um, who would you like to convince to try to stay within the Alliance? Hmm. So I feel like if it's true that the Lokatha are more hunter gatherer in culture than or then they're going to need somebody for protection. So I think they'd be more likely to stay in an alliance already. So I'm gonna go try to talk to the I hmm? What's it called? The other ones? Um the Lokatha, so the Lokatha then... need the protection. The Koalinth are yes, looking the are these large, more goblinoid type um, that look more martial, very martial. They and seem unpleasant. So, well, you know and what? Unpleasant. Indeed, they kind of surround you, um, standing too close all the time, and coming forward to you, um, and almost start to try to provoke you into fighting. Hmm. Indeed, the top one kind of steps forward and seems to want to challenge you 
in battle while he's here. I'm not interested in fighting with you. You will declare you a coward loudly. Huh. I only have four hit points, so it would be very foolhardy for me to be like, let's go. Um, I'm going to, mm, okay, well, I'm going to try to reason with him and say that there is some merit also in having powerful negotiation skills, not just in battle, but in, you know, the ante rooms and royal chambers of the world. Okay, make a persuasion check. Okay. All right. Whoop. Okay, so I rolled a 17 with my Kraken wow. dice. I know, Look at right? You. Plus 4 for persuasion, 21. So in your reasoning, you make a you stand up and make quite a nice speech, and some of the Lokatha behind you kind of pop up and are looking and listening. The Koalinth are hear you and listen to you, and then are fed up with the talk. They decide there is going to be uh, that this is not a place worth um, having an alliance with. Besides, you look too elfy, and we prefer um, we prefer the blood of the elves be used to draw the sharks so that we may eat their fins um, is basically the curse that is put upon you. Um, the, wow. You will hear much worse things said about elves and what they would like to do with them as well. They leave, however, your speech has um, incurred you the favor of the Lokatha who will nice. join the alliance. Great. That is a success. Nice. Um, let's see. Nether. Present. You have an audience before the queen as her two guards, her two top attendants stand at guard and um, your friend Moriah leaves with the frail little um, seer, Saurif. <laughs> Hello, your majesty. <clears throat> I do not think we've been introduced. My name is Nether. I'm from Saltmarsh. I don't have great skills at speaking, like some of my companions. And I'm not looked on with particular favor by most of the inhabitants of Saltmarsh. But I'm a very good listener. I'm a firm believer in the exchange of honest information. Do you have any questions that I might be able to help you with? <sighs> Have you heard any of your friends mislead me while we've been here? Not to my knowledge, but to be perfectly fair, we haven't really known ourselves for that long. A group of people that have come together looking to make some sort of life by doing favors for those who are currently in power in Salt Marsh. So far, those favors have, to my mind, been the sort of thing you'd expect. Deal with those who are breaking laws. Take vengeance upon those who have harmed the children of the people who live in Salt Marsh. Do you feel lied to? I am 
suspect of those who enter my home claiming to want an allegiance, yet come directly from having thwarted my own plans to defend my people. I believe the circumstances that we found your people were particularly unfortunate. The individuals with whom you were dealing were nefarious murderers. Their hands and their ship well known to be drenched in the blood of innocents. We boarded their ship and slew them as I imagine you would do the same for any who threatened your family, your home. And we found, we found those lizard folk there. Difficult to know what the right decision was at the time. We made the best one we could. One can only make the right decision with the information they have at the time. What would you have done in our stead, if you don't mind <clears> asking? You have made your case for your decision then, but I cannot long dwell on then. The needs of now grow too great. So I ask you now, do you still, will you give us what we sought, if you still have it? You seek weapons? Yes. Defend your people? Yes. When a neighbor with whom you have very little communication with begins to arm themselves. It might be natural to take alarm. If there's an open exchange of information, if you have enemies that are not salt marsh, then What benefits you would benefit them as well. We can be neighborly in making sure that both of our people are strong against a foe. And what of those who came and slew from outside? Now that is where I might have questions. We are not knowledgeable of all that goes on in Saltmarsh. Unlike your society, Saltmarsh is governed by several individuals, some of whom I don't think are particularly trustworthy. So if there are those that threaten your people from Saltmarsh, it would be good for us to have evidence that we could bring to those who are trustworthy so that they would gain power over those who are not. To my knowledge, there has been no attack, certainly nothing formally declared by the Council of Saltmarsh against the lizard folk. Personally, I cannot see what purpose it would serve? Why make a neighbor angry? You would advise those who you 
serf in power of what we want. That is why we were sent. We proved our usefulness by dealing with those individuals who caused harm in Saltmarsh. They asked us to do them another favor, to find out why our neighbors were arming themselves. That is why we arrived, and I will admit I was very frightened. You are quite numerous. And I felt very threatened. But so far you've dealt with us dealt with us very fairly. And we would represent that. Or at least I would. And I can speak for several of my companions. Those that are good at speaking at any rate. <laughs> Never make a persuasion check. Oh, dear. Here goes the die roll. Much better at intimidation. It wasn't very intimidating, so. No, no, I wasn't trying to intimidate. Boop. So that's a ten. She seems to accept your explanation, assuming it will continue. Um, regards it favorably, but cautiously. Um, all right. Inaris. Do you go to help the wounded and sick lizard folk he heads that way to check it out see how many are in there um you will see that these four that four of them have been indeed separated um down in some the areas down here A couple of them have attendants who, if you approach, they kind of say, no, 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 trying to sort of um, keep you back from the sick ones. I was told to help. Mm hmm? How? I to, uh, Draconic. Oh. Um, they will ask, who ordered you to help? My friend. She'll hold up a med kit. What is that? It's a med kit. Healing. You are a healer. Of uh, the sort? Sure. They will nod and allow you in. Great. And she will enter the room and go to whichever one looks like it's All right. Make a, uh, make a medicine check. There will be a combination of physical wounds, of other ailments, infections, etc. that will take some time for you to treat between all of them. Does the kit help? Um, for my medicine check, I rolled a five. You don't, I don't need know. to do a medicine check if you've got a kit. Uh, if, you're it's, if you're proficient in medicine. Uh, that's to stabilize a dying creature. Um, this is a broader use of the Are you kit looking to heal people? To, okay, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I have anything to add to it or not, but I do have to buy it right now. Do you have healing magic? I do. my healing word that could I have help a healing touch as well but I don't think I have it prepared uh, so uh, between all of these wounds you feel just overwhelmed right there's little things you can patch up but you feel like oh, with this healing kit you're just not 
familiar enough with your anatomy and you don't quite you're not able to do it fast enough to make a great difference in their healing process. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Do any of them look severe enough for me to waste my healing word on them? Well, you could identify the the most the, the most wounded one. <laughs> if I leave without doing something, Mariah will be pissed. So, which so the one that looks like he's dying, I will uh, I'll use my healing word on him. Okay, make a uh, charisma Sean? check. Just a straight charisma roll. Yeah, Sean's card might have gone down. Yeah. Hopefully that won't Trying suck. To get your uh, phone back in here, Peter. Yeah. Eleven. You took it out of thingy. Yeah. That's poor internet. Yes, Liz, I've had Corona with lime. It's lovely. <laughs> I love Corona. <laughs> I was like, you haven't had it right if you haven't had it with mine. I was just saying, oh, I've, like, I haven't had a drink in like, God, you like six plus months. That's like asking, you like gin? Have you have you tried gin with tonic water? <laughs> I do often. <laughs> I ask people that when I find out they like gin. I'm like, have you tried it with tonic water and lime? <laughs> wow. I know, it's nuts. I've got all the inside scoops. Not Peter, me. <laughs> That's, um... That's some, yeah, that's, that's some top tier uh, advice right there. Yeah, I'm a visionary. All right. For those that um, are watching, um, Sean is obviously away from home. Um, he has got problems with his land card. So if he's not back, we understand why. But if he is back, then he'll be back as soon as he can. Yeah. But while we are waiting for that, exclamation mark giveaway. If you'd like to win some dice, we are sponsored by Kraken Dice themselves. These dice are not even on the shelves yet. So if you want to win some please consider entering all right do it lastly mariah hello speaking to saurif um oh he's back so uh, um, um everything good jade uh yeah yeah so i've, I've um okay. i've put peter i've put your phone in the waiting room just in case we lose sean again. that's fine i'll leave it up yeah okay hello um hello so, um, is when I ask if we can talk, um, does, it sounded like earlier you said that I was off with him somewhere. Where where are we going? Um, he will lead you to his private quarters. Um, there is a desk with some books and such that he will bring you to. Okay. Um, I take a look at the books. Um, reading anything interesting of late? Hmm. Yes, very interesting. Uh, one, he holds up a number of... He, he kind of shows you the different reading materials. Um, uh, there are um, a number of papers and a number of words. You see, you speak Elvish. What, what languages do you um, speak? I speak Common, Elvish, and Sylvan. Okay. In Common and Elvish, you see a number of the papers just have the word alliance written on them you can see that just by glancing um there are and he kind of gathers up these loose papers and puts them aside um which seem to be letters missives etc and he sure. takes the books forward um and um a couple of them he shows off one of them being the politics of power another <laughs> being the triumph of diplomacy one being um the occult properties of gemstones by Archmage Tensor, but he he, pro, he presents one of his most favorite. He said, mm, "This, mm, good. This is what I am learning." And he holds it up, and it says, "Power politics." Oh. In common. Very interesting. Sounds like the sort it of thing my mother would have read. Speaks of. Ammunition. The kind of... Hmm. For instance... I know... A thing. You know I know. I have... Ammunition. Yes. That's correct. 
Hmm. Good. Good. Um. Learning blackmail. <laughs> good. Uh, it's a it's a skill that has its uses. Common in um, politics, yes. Depending on where you are. Subterfuge. <laughs> Manipulation. Bribery. Yes. This is why I... How to interact with Saltmarsh Powerful. <laughs> um, those are all tools. Tools that belong in a much larger toolbox. Saltmarsh Powerful are tools belonging in toolbox, yes. <laughs> no, I mean things like bribery. <laughs> or ah, yes. you know, ammunition. Um, subterfuge. They are things that one might choose to use depending on the situation. Is right. not how it is done. Like I said, it depends on where you are and who you're dealing with. If I were to, uh, if I were to visit a far off realm where I know there is a king who has spies in every corner of his realm and I couldn't uh, do anything helpful or get a word in without doing the same, then that would be a place where subterfuge would be useful but if i were attempting to establish a genuine relationship between others i feel like that would undermine my case hmm. like i that, see you pick the tool that's the most useful for the situation hmm. and what is most useful for salt marsh tell me everything you know I'll tell you what I know and I'll tell you what I suspect because those are two different things yes what I know is that there are five people who currently rule salt, salt marsh as a united body but as you would probably understand individuals have different wants and needs and I think that they're all in their own way vying for what interests them Salt Marsh is also dealing with potential outside interference from Neverwinter. That's a much larger uh, settlement north of here. Are you familiar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if you are, you planning to tell him the truth about everything? I'm not planning to lie. Um, I what I want to stress to him are several things. One that um, I genuinely on behalf of Saltmarsh, want to see peace between Saltmarsh and the lizard folk people. And that I think, and that we have been given the authority to act as such in this case. Okay. And we can, you know, work to as an intermediary to make sure that that is accomplished. I am, that's what I want in this situation. Um, I want, I, very much want to make it clear to him and I, I'll bring out the the leather armor that we found earlier that Melvin mm -hmm. cleaned off I want to show him the Zentarum symbol and explain to him what that is okay um, <clears throat> all of this he will take in it will come down to um, he will he will listen to that Sure. That will help. It will come down to a role, though, okay. of how you lay all of this out, and it will sure. be persuasion. I have advantage anyway, <laughs> so because I give myself a thing. Go for it. So let's roll these dice. Kraken boys, don't let me down. Hmm. Okay, uh, 16 plus 5 is 21. <clears throat> cool. That will be a success. <clears throat> we don't have any outright failures. We have two successes. The lizard folk reputation between all of you before the banquet will ever so slightly. What do you? So I, I had an addendum that I forgot about. Okay, go ahead. Um, I. I want to ask him, um, if, if there is a threat, a credible threat to your people, 
then you should do everything that you can to arm yourselves. And if you can share that information with me so that I know that I'm acting in the best interest of everyone involved here, I will happily give you the weapons that you were attempting to trade for. We stepped in and acted in a way that we thought was best at the time, but obviously our information has changed. Hmm. Those of Saltmarsh seem wiser than we thought. I have heard. It is time for banquet now. I will tell Otha Kent of what you have told me and what else I have heard. But it is my queen's decision, not mine. That is entirely fair. And the banquet. <laughs> they will gather you in a long haul. <clears throat> it was four that one person would sit sort of at the table of honor and eat the best dishes that are prepared and will represent all of you during this meal. Who is that going to be? I'm proficient in a lot of the social stuff. Yeah, I was about to say, not yet. You do not want Nay up there anywhere near speaking distance <laughs> or we're all doomed. And she's already, Sarayan's gathered two groups to the Alliance. Mm -hmm. And she's a not smooth skin entirely. Sure. I'm hearing Sarayan. Yeah, go for it. All right, Sarayan, you sit at the head table. The rest of you are brought food. Melvin and Prion probably enter the room with cuts, bruises, bite marks. Yeah. Um, um, in fact, Prion, the one that has been sitting on your shoulder refuses to leave your shoulder and just simply perches upon it. Cool. Um, and another one kind of tags along to um, protesting and um, you see it tugging at your um, your uh, at the, the corner of your boot in Eris is this tiny little lizard folk just kind of looking up at you and waving in the dining hall. Go lean down and pick it up and put it in her lap. <laughs> It'll kind of reach up towards the plate um, as long as you oh. let it sit there. <laughs> as you the feed it. Oh, cute. Most of you, those of you in the common area on the not at the head table are fed um, large chunks of heavily seared um, <clears throat> uh, alligator steaks. It's a little bit chewy at times, but it's not too bad. Large pots of steamed and roasted vegetables and other things. Um, common food, stews and such, but it's not too bad for the most part. Melvin pulls um, a small pouch from his belt and takes a small pinch of some powder out of it and spreads it on his food. Um, this is the... Um, uh, handy spice pouch. Very nice. Um, um, flavor this meal. Particularly delicious to you being able to do that. Um, the and at one point, what looks like a quarters of a humanoid body is put down onto the table in front of all of you as well. The lizard folk quickly grab pieces, break off a joint, and um, start to um, cut through the meat and send it around, offering plates to you. <laughs> Whatever it was previously is hard to say. Do you eat just... of it? No, I would just stick to the crocodile meat. Negatory, Ghost Rider. Uh, can I attempt to identify the meat? In sure. Uh, make a nature check. So you kind of okay. pick through it, it, look, look like at a it. Large bar type. Um, I'm gonna use my <laughs> D20 inspiration for that. Not Sarayan, quite like that. Knowing right. that it is polite, will take the tiniest bite. 
Um, okay. I have a 21 for that nature check. Rolled an 18. Plus uh, you see little bits uh, on what looks to be like an arm that they have. There are these little spines that come out of the forearm. Almost as if there were fins on the side of the arm. Okay. I'll 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 take a bite then. <laughs> yeah. To be I'll polite. Also have some. Everything goes to tiny critter in my lap. Did I eat a triton? <laughs> <laughs> no one's asked. It's definitely an aquatic humanoid. Soylent green is people. <laughs> no. Soylent green is people. I would, I would just take people. some and hand it up. To my <laughs> and the uh, little <laughs> just absolutely just shoves as much as it can in its uh, mouth. Um burps a little bit of it back up onto your shoulder which starts to drip down your armor darling oh my, as yeah. you I'll are splash eating the, water. the delicacies are brought out to you Saran. a beautiful uh, first of all a lizard folk comes up to you and asks if you would prefer natural or freshened water I would prefer freshened water please Okay. Um, a couple of them order natural, a couple say freshened. Uh, the freshened, the natural water seems to be regular, clear water. Um, the freshened water seems to have mashed up bits of berries and leaves Ooh. in it. Um, it smells <laughs> pungent. Mmm, <laughs> pungent. <clears throat> and it is incredibly bitter. Please make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I was afraid that the natural water would be like some gross like swamp water. That was clearly I, the intent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, what? Peter, you would never. <laughs> okay, we have a nine. Mm -hmm. Plus two, eleven. Nice. You're able to keep it down and oh, like your tongue is stinging on the like the on the back it is like um it's just been um it's like you just took you just drank straight angostura bitters or something like that and um then the first course is brought out for you the delicacy course for the head table there is an artfully arranged boa constrictor kind of snaking its way uh up a branch um it is oh. all roasted what a beautiful Snake? presentation and Sick? surprise they <laughs> they bring it forward and then someone whoosh, cuts a knife across it and all these squirming little things fall down wriggling onto the ground and the lizard folk gleefully start stabbing forks at these little warm um half cooked living um grubs that seem to be cooked within this cooked snake and eating them uh, Sarayan feigns an inability to get one of them onto a fork, but makes a big show of it, like, oh, drat! Oh, so, oh my! <laughs> Sorry about uh, that. Oh, it's like, uh, another one's... <clears throat> uh, the, the, uh, uh, the lizard folk lieutenant kind of <clears throat> spears a couple and hands them to you and says, smooth skin, too slow. Here <laughs> must be, and Sarayan takes it and just <laughs> takes a little nibble. <laughs> All right, it's really gross. Make a con another Constitution <laughs> saving throw. Oh my oh, god! Was it gonna be like surprisingly tasty? <laughs> I dodged a bullet by being an asshole. Sarayan <laughs> is just she wants to be polite, <laughs> so uh, I rolled a three plus four is seven. Or plus two is seven. Yeah. Or five. You plus suddenly five. the um, freshened water returns to your mouth, and you, <laughs> as you cover your mouth, a bit of it just sort of drips between your fingers. <laughs> you have one failure, one success, and uh, it is they have noticed. Um, <laughs> they're looking at you. Of course. The next yeah. course is a beautiful stew that is quite delicious, actually. Oh, thank God. <laughs> And the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 19 plus 2 21 and the last one they <laughs> did you actually roll just then i did yeah i just threw oh. it real fast it meant nothing 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, no, you <laughs> you roll without a check, and you waste the 19. Um, the the last one that's brought out is indeed a beaver skull. There are five large beaver skulls, each one placed in front of you, and you see the queen and the lieutenant take it by the two sort of um, teeth that are still protruding. Um, it is... It looks like it's maybe been aged, like it's got this sort of waxy, papery skin um, on the head, and uh, it's clear to fur, but the two front um, teeth are very noticeable. And they kind of work their fingers between the two front teeth and just and break the skull in half, and then just eat use the um, use the skull to sort of eat the innards of the brain and such. Okay. DM. DM. Yeah. Is it incredibly poor protocol to go up to the table where the um, the dignitaries are? Not necessarily. Are there are attendants and such um, coming up to the various dignitaries. And... So now they're just sort of makes her way by and sort of leans over towards Sarai and says, Are you really going to eat that? I'm going to try. I might be able to help you. How? Serene's kind of looking over her shoulder like, mm, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, Nether? Can I cast invisibility on the, um, on the, uh, uh <laughs> beaver brains? <laughs> that, that roll that you made earlier, we're not counting. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, it draws a little bit of attention, um, and they kind of all look about like, what, what's, what's this all about? I, I smell poorly. She's trying to help me out. I'm sorry. It's for your benefit. <laughs> oh my God. That is correct. She does smell very bad. Mm -hmm. So she, so, uh, Nether will cast, uh, invisibility on the monkey, on the beaver brains and then sort of surreptitiously move them uh, with, a, with a certain help from her friend away from uh, uh, Sarayan's table as Sarayan is per perhaps pretending to eat very <laughs> Alright, mm, Sarayan, it helps not to be able to see it. Make a constitution saving throw with advantage. Okay. Okay, rolled an 18. And a four. So we're going to go thing. with the 18. So it's a dirty 20. <laughs> that is enough. And um, being able to hold your own and uh, you are able to stay at this table, you briefly became sick, but not enough to have to leave the table and are able to finish the meal with the dignitaries, earning a great deal of respect from the lizard folk. Um, a very tough increasing um, uh, skill series of uh, saving throws there. So um, congratulations, Saray, and, um, and able to keep that down. You will probably regret it soon enough, but... Um... Um, so has Nether gone back to her seat? Yes. Uh, Nether, just or, imagining... Yeah, that... Or maybe behind, still just behind. Let's okay. See, yeah. Just some sort of surreptitious little... <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, the rest of the evening is yours to do as you wish um you feel you have earned now the trust of the lizard folk as well otha kent instructs you to offer a loose alliance to salt marsh and will reveal that the reason for gathering weapons is because of impending sahuigan invasion There have been reports of them and indeed um, attempts of the, uh, by Suhuigan to infiltrate the marsh. She has been gathering weapons to defend her people and gathering other aquatic races to form a loose alliance. It was not in her mind. She did not think that the um, any land dwellers would be willing or um, able to form this alliance, but the others have agreed with the help of Serene and the rest, and she will 
agree to this alliance should the leaders of Salt Marsh do so as well. Yippee! She will also, it is also now late at night after this, and she will offer you a place to stay. For what it's so. worth, Sarayan is pretty disturbed by the accounts she's heard from now two sources at the lair about Triton's aggressing other folk. And so at some point she would like to be able to talk to Sariv. I don't know if that's something I should do next week, but... Perhaps. Okay. But you will have time to do it next week. It is winding down the All evening. Right, yeah. Mm. What's that? You should sing a song. I I look up at the the dignitary table. <laughs> this is the the formal part of the meal has passed. Um, okay. It is now devolved into eating all the rest of the scraps off of oh, everyone's okay. table all at once. Um, jokes, games, stories. It has turned from formal dinner to after party. As formal as a lizard folk dinner gets. It was mostly just people staying at their own tables and eating everyone's food as opposed to eating everyone's food at everyone's table. Okay. <laughs> e eating everyone's well, food. We don't get seen as food, then I'll take it. I'll, uh, for eating the time that. being, I'll play a little bit of, play a little bit of fiddle. Okay. Keep some music going in the background. They very much appreciate it. They seem to like the music. Uh, you are, as the evening continues, you will be shown to your quarters. You will all be given one room to sleep in all together. There are cots, um, well, mostly just, it's more like piles of hay that you're given to sleep upon. Um, as well as some fresh water, and the two little hatchlings will follow you in as well. That's adorable. One of them staying on Prion's shoulder, and one of, Inaris, one of them keeps sort of Rife, trying to rifle through your bag. Jill wouldn't make sure nobody's looking, and nobody's looking, and she'll open it up a little bit more. <laughs> I'm curious what you have in your bag now. Um, Poisons. Um, DM, did I learn anything? Um, you would learn that the um. his name here the Irtos is very skeptical of this plan but you will find that there is a immense deferment to Otho Kent um, he is not near the point where he would um, rise against her and you see at one point uh, is following through a secretly through a hallway one of his um, attendance suggests that she is being weak and that he is strong and he picks up that lizard folk by the throat and throws him against the wall for even suggesting anything like that and sort of um, so there is some dissent but for the most part they are um, very very strongly united behind Otho Kent How about Heartsight? Um, sensing alignment, um, that, that is what that is, right? Yeah, uh, also Celestial Fiends Undead, that's what You do not sense anything like that, though. Going around the, let's see, the Coalinth have left. You sense Rs of good from the Merfolk and the Lokatha, um... You do sense a subtle, uh, you do sense, um, evil from the sea elf. Interesting. How strong evil, how like... What does this feature say? Hmm. Creature's current emotional state. Uh, you get to make a charisma saving throw. 
I have a 13 on the Kraken die. Then all I know is uh, the current emotional state. Yeah, so it is... Um... So Celestial Fiends and Undead automatically fail. Okay. Uh, well, it is not... Uh, it is n none of those things. It will... It It's nervous and anxious. Got it. And that's about it. You are given quarters to rest, I assume. Does anyone do anything before going to bed? No. I hear no. I think Everyone's it's very fortunate. Very, very fortunate that we didn't get eaten. Uh, Sarayan does check in with Melvin to compare notes from the temple, because she was very curious about it until she got booted out and she never got to explore. Yeah, I, you I tread upon some, the some altar. Notes. I have some notes, but not not a ton. They, they didn't really want to talk much. They were a little busy, you know, praying and stuff, but... Um... I talked to the merfolk and the low Kaffa. Would you like to see my notes? Sure. Here's mine. Okay. And right they... Over my, my notes. Yeah. <laughs> Trade notes. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Never. There's still time yet. I don't know. I'm not worried. A bit of joke in his voice. Get some rest. Hmm. What happened to you? You're all scratched and bruised. Um, I said, uh, he goes to point and then realizes, obviously, he remembers that you can't see. I have a little one here. Won't seem to leave me alone. Do you want it to? Please. It's fine right now. It's gonna have to when we go. I'm not taking it with us. We could, you know? If they let us. I'm sure we could. We the last thing we need is an infant. Another infant. Obviously one that's not capable of defending itself unlike you never obviously you can defend yourself i'm also not an infant <laughs> are you not oh you no. been around not the block a few times that sounds that, coming from where i live that's a completely different meaning <laughs> um you're, you're 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 a child though right never you're young yes Yes. Sorry, I, I don't mean, I don't mean a babe. You're obviously a, a, a young girl. Is that? You keep talking though. This is very interesting. Where are you from? Precisely. Oh. I'm not that far south, between here and Neverwinter. Just a small village, fishing village. That's and... uh. And 14 year olds are considered infants there no but i meant a small i meant a young child you're young there's a phrase Prion called putting one's foot in one's mouth and you are expertly doing it how comes Sarayan writes that down <laughs> putting foot in mouth not literal never's young that's correct right she's a child or am i assuming Yes, yes. You're Depending right. on the situation that a child finds themselves in, they're forced to grow up pretty quickly. That's exactly what I mean. She's more than capable of defending herself. Unlike this one here, which is why I said I can't take it with us. It needs to be with his people. Oh, well, that's, that's not something I'm going to argue against. Um, Are you yeah. ready to say goodbye to it? Of course I am. The thing's chewing me to pieces, and it just smiles. Uh, no, it's, it's I cute. think that I think it's that uh, Melvin and Nether might have the same idea on this. Um, I was gonna cast a uh, tensor's floating disc, and um, the large open book 
will appear, and I was going to try to wrangle the the small wizard folk children onto it and give them a ride back to the uh, nursery. Quite the Panaris, same Panaris is breath. Breath. Uh, Quite the same idea, I suppose. <laughs> Do what, what you want with yours, what, but I'm what gonna was be your fine. plan, Nether? Oh, I was going to do this. She snaps her fingers and creates minor illusion to create a giant face of a crocodile. Just <laughs> and they start Nether. to run away. There's no Poor need things. to disturb them like that. What the hell? That was we need, rude. We need our sleep. The little one wasn't bothering me. Well, I wasn't scaring the one that was with Inaris. I okay, was okay. the one that was on, <laughs> specifically oh, on the eyes. one that was uh, that was on uh, Prion. I I know, but it wasn't bothering me either. I'm just saying we can't take it with us. Well, either no, of them, Inaris. Really, what? you can't take it with us. We have enough looking after our own. Keep picking each other up. It just wants to sleep in here. I don't care. Hi, sleep in here. But when we leave tomorrow, I'm sure we're not gonna find it in your backpack, are we? You're not allowed to go through my backpack. I don't think we'll you need to. You kind of see their two we'll see tiny moving. little faces looking around the corner of the door. Anaris will motion for them to come back in. It's safe. Come on. She'll hold up big jerky. <laughs> they all both rush to you. It's a very, very bad idea. We're not taking it with Let us. Let her do what she wants. She Get can deal rest. with the consequences in the morning. Hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> so things get fairly quiet when you are able to take your rest. And what seems early in the morning a bit too early. You hear a thump, thump at your door. Sorry, that's a long rest, right, Ian? Yes. <laughs> yes. Just barely. I'll go uh, check the door. <laughs> As you open it, um, a lizard folk slumps down through the door and falls prone. Um, Unmoving a knife stuck into its back. You hear the sound, you hear a crashing sound like um, either a wooden wall or another wooden structure being battered, and you hear a few gurgling sounds coming down the hallway as well. Can I use uh, my uh, spare the dying to keep it from dying? Um, you go to, um, put your hand on it, or just to reach out to that life force, and it seems it is already dead. Uh, sound down the hall, where's it coming from? Um, it's around the corner from your room and up to the left. Um, it seems to be leading up, up north, uh, but make a perception check. Okay. I will do the same. Plus five. Oof, not good. Um, 13. 16. 21. Um, so yes, definitely up to the, up to the north, um, from where you are, from where you're uh, staying, a left down the hallway. I'm gonna yell, uh, rouse the guards, and I'm gonna run after the noise. Okay, you run out into the hallway, and you see three more lizard folk, two of them with arrows stuck in their chests, another one, um, seemingly laying in a pool of blood from what must have been a melee wound. And you hear... Um, the sounds of struggle coming from beyond towards the throne room. Uh, continuing to run Watch in that there. direction? Yeah, yeah so there. can we all hear this? How many of us can... Because Serene would also be going. If they've been rousing you, yeah, you were all staying in the same room, so... Okay, Serene's right As behind. As I've been going, I've been shouting, like, basically, like, murder, rouse the guards. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, you, you shout that. You don't hear much response, though. Um, there are a number of um, bodies that you see on your way here. And as you head towards the throne room, you come to see the door kicked in. Um, wheeling behind to, uh, to meet you, you see this large Suhuigan that one of you recognizes having seen before. 
half of his body is covered in shell-like armor, um, almost as if he's got crab-like features across his chest and broad shoulders. He seems to have found a great sword that he holds menacingly. Um, there is another one, more lithe and um, holding lighter weapons, um, also staring at you. And standing over the body of Otha Kent, who lies upon the floor, bleeding out, is the sea elf that you met before in the pools a dagger in hand and they turn to engage the rest of you walking slowly over the bodies of two or three other lizard folk guards and that is where we will pick up next week